We're doing it, bro. Let's do it. Your first podcast. Yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully you picked a good one to come on. I hope so. You, <laughs> that's up to you at this point, right? <laughs> I guess, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, shout out to uh, Jane and Quincy for yeah. hooking this the, up. The Q&J. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you get hooked up with those guys? They're, um, they're a cool couple of gals. Yeah, so they got, like, their business where it's just, like, for athletes, you know, and being an athlete in Brisbane, like, I kind of I knew Jane already, and then I met Quincy this, this year, and we just – they're like, hey, like, let's do this, let's do that. I'm like, oh, I, I like like, they, like their worth that their work ethic. Yes, yeah. this is like one of a kind. I'm like, yeah, hey, like, let's do it. Like, why not figure out a way we can build my brand and at the same time help them build theirs and see what happens. Because so you're obviously not from Australia, so you're out here competing with the Brisbane Bullets. Yeah. So, like your network's small here yeah. compared to home right yeah, yeah, like at sure. home you've got a crazy network of yeah. like friends and family and homies and all the yeah. different sort of like you would have gathered that over your career yeah so out here it it's, would be hard to like it, just have nothing right? yeah it's definitely different um like you said just i'm not really from here i'm well i'm not from here at all um so like i just want to build that up and just have like a following base uh also like brisbane bullets is like it's a like an NBL team and the NBL I feel like is growing as well yeah so being a part of that growth and also having my own growth alongside of that I think will only be beneficial for myself and how how I'll go staying in this league and stuff like that so yeah I don't really follow the basketball stuff yeah. that much so it's gonna be cool for yeah. me to learn like I'd like to yeah. learn about that yeah. that sort of I mean it's growing so m maybe soon you'll start following it yeah, Hopefully. Well, yeah. well dude like that's the thing is whether I like it or not, in a way, it's like you're here now. So it's yeah. like it must be doing something yeah. because even though we don't know each other, it's like yeah. through mutual friends, you're here. So yeah. it's like obviously some shit's going down yeah, where yeah. it is starting to branch out, which is cool. Definitely. Um, like the league is like from my – I played last season and this year like the league is already – took major strides i know everyone keeps telling me like back in the day back in like the 80s and early 90s and stuff like that it was like the league was really good and it's kind of like fell off a little bit but since my one year it's been like crazy like we got like a tv deals you got famous like you got like a bunch of ex nba players like myself and you got other nba players in the league now and then you got and uh bogut yeah he came back and he's probably one of the most known Australian basketball players so I mean it's just it's like the league is just growing it's crazy right now so what was your um road like to get to here now like um you would have done the college thing yeah. uh so you said you were from just outside of Philadelphia yeah so you did like the college thing played in the NBA to come here like what was what did that road look like oh uh, it's I mean it's basketball like I feel like any sport is just crazy like you never know what what's going to happen and like no two stories are the same so like yeah. mine was just I did five years in college um, which isn't normal uh, most times when you're in college you do only four years I redshirted my first year um, so just so what does that mean so that's like a bench thing right yeah, or like a practice team or yeah it's um so redshirting is just like for me it was I wasn't going to play as much um, I had a lot of older like older guys uh, ahead of me so it was like why waste a year Mm. And me and my coach, we sat down like, listen, like we don't want you to waste this year. Like, like they told me, like you're a good player. We want you a part of this program's future. So don't waste this year. Just redshirt, sit out, practice with the mm. team. Like you do everything. You're still a part of the team. You're just not playing games. Was that hard to do? Uh, yeah. At first it was, but like I'm still getting like the outside of the court experience, like college experience. Yeah. Um, and then even so, like on the court, like I was still practicing. And like I was traveling, like I was, like I was a part of the team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like the only thing I just wasn't doing was playing. And I feel like for myself, I really wasn't ready to play. Like it was like a different level because you're going from playing against 16, 17 year olds to playing against 23 year olds, 22 year olds who are like pretty much reaching their grown man prime. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like I wasn't physically ready yet. So that year definitely got me ready um so it worked out it was, it was great 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 plan i think um because i feel like it, it would probably 
hurt your ego a little bit yeah. if, if you weren't in check of your ego. Yeah, no, nah, d- definitely. Um, it's definitely one of those where, like, if if you're not on board with it, like, it, it'll it make you, like, resent some people. Yeah. Um, but, like, I had, I, I looked at it as a positive rather than a negative. Um, but it's, it's, it's not, it's not that common, but it's not uncommon as well. Like there's a lot of guys who, who've done it. And and in the program I was in Pittsburgh, there was already a guy on the team who redshirted. So he was like, listen, like, this is how it's going to go. And this, that, and he's on, he, he from 10 minutes from where I live pretty much. So it was good to relate to someone that close and we became close friends and, so it helped out having the people around me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then you yeah. got all your friends and family back home supporting you. So it's like you almost forget that you're not actually playing minutes on the court, but like you're still practicing, you're still learning. It's probably to, like the best case scenario. Yeah. Then, right? But yeah. it's like it would feel like it would be a step backwards. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is. Um, And especially the, like basketball in America is like you got guys who in high school take a year, like, repeat a year just so they can have like an advantage on the competition um i mean it, it sounds crazy but like if a guy is not getting recruited to a school he wants to go to he'll oh, i'm gonna do another year in high school so i can get the college that i want to go to stuff like that so for me i was a younger senior in high school so getting that red shirt year probably did that leveled tra- it yeah out. it leveled yeah. it out for me yeah. a little bit you know so by the time my next year like i I started easing my way into like the lineup and stuff like that. I didn't play as much, but I was still like dependent upon to come off the bench and provide stuff for the team. And then after that year, it was like, like I was a starter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I did three years as a starter. And like, like that first year, if, if it wasn't like that, I would maybe only did two, you know? So maybe and my last year I was able to be drafted and I had a great senior, senior year. So it was beneficial. And then like, Leading in from that to the draft, like, was crazy. Um, there's only 60, 60 picks to get picked into the NBA. Does the NBA, they don't do a combine in the same way that the NFL does, or do they? They, they We do do a combine. Um, yeah, there's a combine, but it's not, like, it's not as big as the NFL combine. Yeah. Like, um, like our, our combine, is not, it's not as many people, and they're not really grabbing – like a diamond in a rough out of the combine. Yeah. The, the guys that go to the combine are who's expected to be drafted, who's yeah, expected okay. to like the better the better players and stuff like that because it's like an invite. But like the NFL combine, you can – I feel like you can work your way into it from like your own college pro days or – Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. so many different, different ways to get into that. So – like the NBA is a, it's a little different. Uh, I know when I came through, we didn't even play basketball. Like, like our combine, we didn't play against each other. We just did drills and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so that was weird. And like now they're making it so you can actually play against like the the competition that's there. So, I mean, yeah, but it's 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 a crazy process getting yeah. into it. Yeah, for sure. So, what is the process of being drafted then? Um, so. Combines a part of it, so if you're lucky enough to get selected into the combine, um, I was. Um, like, it's not that many people that go. It's maybe sixty people, like something like that, maybe less. Um, and then there's other ways, like guys who just work out for different teams. I know I I spent a lot of time in Vegas training. Yeah. And then, um, like I have an agent and all that, and then the teams are reaching out to my agent. Hey, like we want Lamar to come in for a workout. So I did. 22 workouts really which, which is a lot yeah like it's like talking to other people like that's a lot for like a two month span like you like you graduate college at like april or something like that the, the combines in like may like may early may and then like that's when you're allowed to start having pre-draft workouts yeah so do you have your pre-draft workouts with other teams and i got like 22 of them in in like a month and a half, two months, and then the drafts in June. And was that in like di- that was different teams, different places? Yeah, like, diff- so you were flying. All I was the flying all over the place. Like I like like I never had time to like sit still. I was living out of a suitcase for like, that month and a half. It it was crazy. Like I'll be in Charlotte one day and then have to fly to Phoenix, then work out. Were they were you flying like commercial that whole time? Um, so, some teams because all the teams pay for it. So 
some teams will have the players fly in commercial. Some teams will have the players fly in first class. Like the longer flights, I normally was first class. But like if it was like a short, you're a big one, motherfucker, luck. Like, yeah, that's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I always made sure I had like an exit row though. Yeah, but like on top of that, like the best thing was like grabbing like the air mileages. Yeah. So like <laughs> like I'm like platinum on pretty much every yeah every airline now because because of that. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a dude. I, it's a crazy world too because like people are trying to show you like the best shit. Like, come to us, bro. Like, here's yeah, a jet. You yeah, know, like, yeah. and that stuff. Like, when you're flying into places on jets, like that influences a kid, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It wasn't like that because like the draft is like you're trying to impress them, not them trying to impress you. Uh, more so, because like it, at the end of the day, like they pretty much rule what it is because they're picking you. Do you have to go through the draft? Like, can you get signed directly? Um. There's like I said, everyone has a different route. Um, so at some point, in order to play in the NBA, I believe you have to have your name in the draft. Okay. Whether you get drafted or not um, doesn't really matter, like as far as if you're gonna play or not. But um, so normally, like the first round is where like those are the guys who are like pretty much getting guaranteed contracts off the bat. Yeah. Like, like we picked you 15, 16, like. You're coming in. We expect you to contribute at some point within your first two years. Yeah, you know. Um, second round, it's hit or miss. Like second round is like, oh, like you got skill, you got potential, but do you really want to be here? You got to work for it. Yeah. Um, that plays a factor. Uh, situation plays a factor. Um, I know for me, I got drafted onto like a really good team, it was a playoff team. Um, at first, I was playing, and then like you go from. Being a st- you go from being pretty much a star in college to going back to yeah rerouting yourself back to like the bench coming off the bench and trying to figure out a role and carve out a, a role and and this a new a new team um, so you go from for me I was with the same coach for five years to going switching to actually I went overseas first and then I came back to the NBA and it's like all right well now you got to figure out how, how you're gonna get onto the court yeah and it's like once you get on the court how you gonna stay on the court. And it's like so much behind the scenes that you just don't know about. Like owners want guys who are like they they invested a lot into to make sure they're on the court. Yeah. So like it, it's tough for like a second round guy who there's not much investment in to to stick. Like I know a lot of guys who second round draft picks. I know a lot actually are in the league still, and then I know a lot just end up overseas like myself it's just, yeah it's, it's it's hit or miss like it's all about opportunity it's about how you seize your opportunity um well the crazy thing with basketball too is like in football there's like 400 dudes on a team yeah yeah like in basketball there's five of you dudes on the court yeah and, and then there's like what five on the bench as it's, well no, it's like i think the roster it's like 13 maybe, maybe it's 15 now um a little bit more but yeah well, that's it's, like it's, nothing it's, yeah dude. it's not it's not much yeah nah. it's like 30 30 30 team, 32 teams, something like that in the NBA. And yeah, it's a, re- it's a definitely a revolving door. If you're not, if you're not like a rotational player, like someone who's going to play like 20 minutes off the bench, like your job's not safe. Yeah. You know, like it's, that's just how it is. Like, like if you're outside of LeBron, James Harden, Steph Curry, like those guys like know like, oh, like, like I'm secure. Like I ain't, I don't got nothing to worry about. But then you got guys who, who are, just as good like not just as good as them obviously but you got really good players who they're not even getting a chance to develop into those guys yeah not even not even getting a chance but not let alone just like never even played in the NBA like if you look in like basketball around the world you have some really really good players who never played the NBA yeah you know what I mean it's like it gets crazy but some guys don't want to play in the NBA because of the fact that they don't want to be coming off the bench they don't want to have to worry about whether they're going to get cut or not yeah when stick trading or not. to teams yeah, back and forth some guys just don't want to have to deal with that like I, there's plenty of players playing in Euro League who are good enough to play in the NBA that just don't want to deal with the bullshit I'd rather make 3 million guaranteed in Barcelona and know this is where I'm going to be at you know like yeah. I mean it, it's crazy like it, it's all preference it's, everyone has their own journey um, yeah it's, it's crazy so where did you first go when you got drafted? Um, so I went to Turkey. Um, that was like a part of like like the agreement. Like Atlanta drafted me, um, and it was like, hey, like like there's not really a, a roster spot for you. So it's either you can come to camp 
and most likely be cut and then not have an NBA team like uh, pretty much assigned to you. Yeah. Or just go overseas, get a year in, and then come to camp next year and just duke it out, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I just took that route. Um, but it was it was good. Like I went overseas, I went to Turkey. Um, what was it like living there? It wasn't bad. Um, it was before like the bombings and stuff started. Yeah. Like, I think maybe like two months after I left that season, like there was like the first bomb in like years at the airport. It was crazy. But um, so playing there, like the team wasn't that good. But, like, I got, like, an experience that I don't think I would get, like, a lot of places. Like, it was one of the top leagues in the world. There's, like, a lot of ex-NBA players in that league. Um, and, yeah, like, then there was a lot of guys who were young who was going to go to the NBA that was in it as well. So, I mean, it was – competition was top-notch. Um, so, like, if you're not in the NBA, like, Turkey is one of those places where you, like, you want to go if you yeah, want, okay. you know. So it's 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 one of the top leagues, and it was definitely one of the top leagues when I was playing there. Was it cool to live in another country? Yeah, like the thing, like I know from living in America, and I was yeah. just talking to like the Justin Brayton who was just on, uh-huh. like he lives here for four months a year. Yeah. Now I got friends in America that if they can't get Dunkin' Donuts, and if yeah. they can't, like they don't want to fucking be there. If yeah. they can't have like what their mom cooks and they can't have like fried chicken all the time like there's there's like comforts that that people want to have from america so it's like it i feel like it's more people that are comfortable and don't want to leave america there's more people like that than people that do want to leave and can enjoy living in other places yeah um yeah it's definitely an adjustment um going to turkey like i know my first night i was there and like three in the morning prayer bells are going off and oh yeah true huh the, yeah the prayer bells are going off and you have like all the stray dogs on the street barking I'm like yo what the hell's going on here like like you know what I'm saying it was, it was like a culture shock right away yeah. you know what I'm saying I'm like dang like alright but like the the lifestyle wasn't that bad like I was in a conservative city like I didn't have to worry about like ISIS or something like yeah. right, right like because Syria is like right there across the border I didn't have to worry about that in my city I didn't have to worry about being judged or something like that like like the city I was in Bursa and that city they everyone treated me like like I was one of their own yeah and like it was amazing like it was like the club was great like oh, playing overseas like you got to worry about whether the the team you're playing for is even even good. gonna pay you no yeah. not even they're good if they're gonna pay you yeah true like you could be there for five months like I've heard stories guys are on their team for five months and not getting paid and stuff like that like there's some crazy stories out there in, in basketball but like the city was just it was amazing it was an hour um, like an hour ferry ride from Istanbul and I love Istanbul Istanbul is one of my favorite cities like that's cool yeah between nightlife restaurants shopping like whatever you need Istanbul has it yeah um yeah, but like you said, like just not having those, those comfort, yeah. comfort foods and comfort stuff that you're used to in America is like, it, it's hard at first. But then you like you realize like, oh, like in most every country I've been to, like you can find a store that has like American shop yeah. like stuff in it. So like there was a store in Istanbul that had like, I think it was called American Pop Up, and it had like all your Captain Crunch, your Cheetos and hot yeah, fries. Like it yeah. had all that. Like so, like every time we went to Istanbul, me and my teammate, my American teammates. Would go there and just rack up. It was expensive as hell, but it was like at that like point you don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, you definitely didn't care. It was like yeah. shit. Let me just I'm pay ten dollars for something I can get for two dollars back home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was crazy, but it was fun though. Yeah, I feel like you grow though, like in those times where because you would have been a young dude like yeah. living away. Yeah, it's yeah. like I feel like it's good to go through that shit. Yeah, nah, like yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, it's a culture shock, uh, but it gives you opportunity to see the world, see stuff that the average person in America who working just a regular nine to five wouldn't get to see like yeah. you know like I'm not I don't think I ever met anyone who's like oh I traveled to Bursa Turkey like you know like who the hell's gonna go there for you know for what reason but just seeing that over the course of my career like I've been to China I've been to Australia now I've been to Italy like just and then playing outside of those countries like we played in Russia played in France played in Germany played played across the world it's like you're not getting that from a normal job. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, that that's one of the blessings that basketball has. Even though it could be unstable, it's like the fact that you can pretty much get your passport stamped up is, like, you got to take advantage of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, 
Was that always like a goal to like travel or it wasn't until you did it that you realized that it was valuable? Yeah, it wasn't until I did it. Um, for me, like growing up, like it was NBA, 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 not tell me nothing. Um, and then like reality hits, you know, like, all right, well, you're going to go get this guaranteed paycheck or try to stick around, try to figure out a way, like different ways to get into the uh, NBA. It's like you're sort of wasting money doing it that way. Yeah. You know, um, I have two kids at home, so it's like I got to – take care of them and so I was like alright I'm gonna go chase the money um, but yeah like once you get into traveling it's like damn we're going to Paris oh let me see if I if we can go out in Paris or I can go shopping or go sightseeing here Yeah, you know what I'm saying so it's like like stuff like that or we're going to Russia let me go check out check out this city or it, like you know it's like yeah. little like you try to squeeze in some stuff that you wouldn't normally get to do while you're there but it's like it's fun though it's yeah. fun like yeah it's cool that you get developed like, a love for it because like yeah. I, I've seen both sides like with the work that I did with athletes like yeah. I'd see the athletes that would want to take advantage of it yeah. and saw all the positives for like the you know it is a bit of a fuck around at yeah. times yeah for sure but it's like then you'd see the other people where they were just like super closed off to it yeah. they only would just did the work and then they wanted to leave but yeah. it's like if you've got to be there the same amount of time, it's like I feel like I'd rather be the dude that enjoyed it. Might as well. You got to take advantage of whatever situation you're in, like because I mean, you only get one life to live, you know. So there's no no need in moping and soaking around. And if you're gonna be in a different country, there's beauty everywhere. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. There's stuff that you never seen everywhere. So it's my you might as well just go and experience some of it. You know, even like there's not much time that you get. So it's like why not just take like two hours three hours out your day to just drive into the country land or go see like a waterfall or go see like you know yeah. like stuff you don't get to see back home like I, so I grew up in Lancaster Pennsylvania like our claim of fame is Amish people you know what I'm saying yeah. so it's like imagine getting out to the world and seeing other you know out other stuff you know yeah. so it's cool dude the whole Amish thing like I remember when I first went to Pittsburgh yeah. and we'd drive through um oh, man Ohio Steel City oh, no yeah. like I landed in Pit oh, you like landed land, in you landed yeah, Pittsburgh and yeah. then we'd get like a rental car and go out to the races yeah and I think oh man I'm trying to remember like the name of the town uh, maybe it is, is Steel City like the name of the I, I think that's like the nickname of Pittsburgh Steel City yeah oh yeah, yeah you're yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah so that that's what the race was called damn what was it yeah, yeah High, I, High Point Raceway yeah, uh, I, anyway but like you drive through and there was yeah, like, um, like Amish the full are, Amish yeah, communities and yeah. I was like Bro, I didn't know that was fucking real. Yeah, like I no, thought that was real. straight up movie shit. Nah, it's it's for real. Like I grew up around like I grew up around it. You know what I'm saying? So like How close? Like how far were you away from there? Fifteen minutes maybe? Like, so like you're like right there. Yeah, so like we had like a little city part, you know, where everyone who's not Amish lives, and then you got like the outskirts, like the farmland is where all the Amish are. So like that's where like if you want if I wanted to drive to Philly like I would have to drive through that, through that or yeah. we had like outlets out there. So if you want to go shopping, like you would have to drive through that too. Um, but they had like their own, like, like Amish, like markets and stuff like yeah. that. Like they'll sell like their whoopie pies and like it, they would, like they would invite the outside in, you know, yeah. they, they know how to make money. You know what I'm saying? So they would just use their crafts. They will have like furniture, they handmade furniture. They, they would build and sell it and people would go out there. Like, yeah. So, I mean, it was like, you knew you was in Amish town when you seen the 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 shit on the side of the road from, from the, the horses. From the horses, yeah. 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 You, you knew it, like you just smell it, and it's like, man, like, and you had to drive around them or something like that. So it's crazy. Did you know? Do you know like much about the whole Amish thing, like where it started or what it's all about? <laughs> no, I I don't. Um, like gro even growing up around it, I never spoke to an Amish person. Like I I just it, it feel like they're in their own world. Yeah, you know? like. Like apparently they don't use electricity. No, nah, yeah, that so ain't shit. It's, yeah, it's like it's like the most I've seen of Amish was like there, we had like a TV show called Breaking Amish or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that that's show. like the most I've seen. And then like I would like hear about like I would see the show and I'd be like, oh, like that guy's in jail and my and, like he's like that's our jail. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. some of the Amish people were going crazy. I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> they're going crazy in my city. Like that's wild. Like yeah, that. dude, that 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 is a trip, but like yeah. it's as real as it is on the movies. Like, yeah. but I feel like that's America in general. Yeah. Like you go, like I lived in Hollywood for a bit. Ah, uh, yeah. And I'm like, it's the fucking same thing. <laughs> like yeah, it's Hollywood's the same crazy. as the movie. Or yeah. like you go to Compton, or yeah. like you go to like a legitimate yeah. ghetto. Yeah. And it's like, 
That's the fucking same thing as yeah, hell like, yeah. This is real yeah, shit. It's, like, yeah, it's not made up. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah, huh? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, I was lucky enough to not have to live in the ghetto growing up, stuff like that. But I have friends who are from there. I've been there visiting them, and it's not something that like I'm like, listen, I don't want to live like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want, I don't want anyone to live like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not. It's like you pretty much. You don't know whether you're gonna get robbed one day. You don't know how some some like I have friends who don't know didn't know when their next meal was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like like growing up like that. It, it adds like a different type of character to you. Yeah. Um, whether you use that as a positive or a negative, definitely is gonna affect you in the long run. But I mean, like it's but you can understand different. like both ways, right? Yeah, like nah. I can I can see why there's like gang violence. I yeah. can see why people like. You know, you 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 hear like someone getting shot for a pair of shoes. Yeah, no, for sure. And you're sure. like, that sounds fucking crazy. It's a but jungle. Then it's like, I can, I get yeah, it. Yeah, it's a jungle out there for sure. Um, that's why you got like a lot of guys who like like athletes who make it out of that, like like really really cherish it, you know, because it's like they they seen it, like they know like what it's like to not have, like I said, not know when the next meal is gonna be, not know like 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 single parent households like my mom was a single parent growing like growing up she had to raise three boys but luckily enough I didn't have to live in like a, a, a neighborhood that you would label ghetto you know what I'm saying like I grew up in a nice neighborhood I had a bunch of friends like in that same neighborhood we were all close were you but, in like an all black community or like a mixed community no I was mixed so my city is like really mixed like um, there's a lot of like a lot of black a lot of Hispanics and also white as well so I mean it, it was really mixed um, my schools were always mixed. That's um, cool. It, it was predominantly like the minorities, though, but like it was still mixed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. So I wasn't like I didn't Lancaster. Not one of those cities where like it's not like a Chicago. It's not like like yeah. like like South Philly or something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not one of those like cities where you got to worry about too much. Like yeah, there's crime. There's crime everywhere. There's a ghetto everywhere. Like, yeah. We had our ghetto, but. If you ask someone who's really from the ghetto, they would laugh at our ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, what I'm yeah, yeah. like it's not like growing up in the projects. Like my mom, she um, she was raised in the projects, so she had stories from like hearing like how her friends got killed or how she had to fight someone. You know what I'm saying? So my mom had those stories. Um, she made sure me and my brothers didn't. Yeah, you know. So like I'm thankful for her for that because I didn't. I necessarily don't want to. I didn't want to grow up in that. And yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Do you still feel like a connection to it though? Because like of what your mom went through? No, not at all. Yeah. Um, okay. it, like, like that was her life, you know, that was her younger, yeah. like, like her younger years. And I, like, I didn't, I don't feel it at all. Like my mom, she's not like, if you meet my mom, you wouldn't be able to tell that. Yeah. This is how she was like, yeah. like where she grew up at. You know, she's like the soft, softest, like spoken person. I know she's like, you know, like she's not, She's not quick to anger. She none of that. So it's like I mean, I was lucky in that area where I didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's cool. Like it, it always really interested me. Yeah. And especially like I got like I got super into rap. Yeah. Like from living yeah, there. Yeah. Like I would I'd have to go into um into Compton uh, a bunch. Like one of yeah. the one of the companies that we used to do stuff for they had their manufacturing facility in Compton. Compton. Yeah, yeah. And so I remember driving, I'd have to go and like pick products and stuff up yeah. from Compton all the time. Yeah, yeah. And like, it just gave me such like a appreciation for the yeah. culture yeah. because it was so real. Like, yeah. I feel like if you don't understand that that shit is like what people are rapping about, like yeah. Yeah. the music that comes out of there, the movies that come out of that culture like it's super real and it gave yeah. me like an appreciation yeah, for yeah. it. Like, like like I said like it's like a motivational piece like like a lot of dudes like tell their stories or use their story as something to fuel them you know yeah. so like 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 myself I didn't have like I didn't need that as a fuel you know my fuel is making sure my family's good you know making sure like I get to live the life I want to live stuff like that like I didn't have to worry about not like going back to some city yeah, you know what I'm saying like yeah. like I still have a place in Lancaster like I love like I love there you know like I probably won't live there forever but like Lancaster as a city is growing from when I was gro like you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying a lot of people don't have that a lot of people still have cities where it's the same as they were when they were younger you know what I'm saying so yeah I never really had to deal with any any like any of those narratives for myself at least yeah yeah, yeah. no it's fuck it, that 
Yeah, that shit's yeah. always just it, it is interesting and you're right like it breeds so much yeah, for like sure. crazy success yeah. and but I feel like you can even then like I can lean on that for my own inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm, that's why I said it's like how you look at any scenario like if you really get to see someone's way of living and then like dang like that's a hard way of living like what do I have to do to make sure I'm not living that yeah. way? You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like you can always use something to feel you. It's just your own mindset you know what i mean so yeah yeah i mean like like i feel like australia has it has a good like i know when i first got here like like the biggest thing was like like me like i, I don't know if you know i brought a dog i try to bring a dog in i oh, did i've bought a dog in yeah from America. that's what i'm saying so like like that was like the biggest news ever i'm like oh well if that's the biggest news in australia oh wait so you tried to bring a dog I tried in to, without doing any quarantine yeah i didn't know Fuck. Yeah, so yeah, so that was like the that was like the biggest thing like So that made news and shit. It made news everywhere. It was back home. It was I seen articles from China, I seen articles from London. I, I'm like, yeah, I'm like if is this if this is the biggest news here in Australia, y'all must not have that much crime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like like y'all like y'all living life out here, like like you know what I'm yeah, saying? We good. Yeah, so it's like so yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Wow. So when I came last season I signed to Brisbane. Um, it was like a Tuesday, or maybe a Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that. And I'm in, I'm in LA. I'm in LA, but I, I, I'm, I live in Pennsylvania. So I signed. I'm in LA. It's like Tuesday or Wednesday, and I got to fly to Australia Sunday. So I had to fly home that next day after signing, pack all my stuff up, get everything situated, like put my car away, get my get my condo situated, stuff like that. Make sure I got everything I need to to leave the country. And I still have my dog. So it's like, all what right. What kind of dog is it? A French bulldog. Yeah. So it's like, all right, cool. I'm going to just bring him. So I'm calling the airlines, like trying to figure out how I'm going to get him on the plane, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, make him a, um, make him a, a, a what the service animal. Um, all right, yeah. cool. So I just, online, I don't know if this really is, I don't know if my dog really a service animal or whatever. I get online, how can I make him a service animal? Website pops up, cool, pay for it, boom. Yeah. I got a certificate. So I call the airline, hey, he's a service animal. All right, he's on your ticket. You know what I mean? So the thing they did tell me, they was like, you gotta have an extra seat for him. So I'm like, nah, like I don't, like, I don't need an extra seat. Like it's cool, he's gonna sit at my feet, boom. So I'm just keeping it moving because it's like, I gotta leave yeah, super gotta fast. Go. I gotta get out of there. So he's on my ticket, I get to the airport in Philly, we go through the lady's like, "Oh, you got the service animal." I show him the, my ticket, like, "Oh, he's service animal, fly on the service animal." Go to um, have a layover in L.A. Get to L.A. We're going through the airport, just hanging around. Get on the plane to to Brisbane, and fly the whole is here. He's in my he's in a carrier though. No yeah. fucking way. So I, I have way. him in a dog carrier, bro. Yes, we get the whole ways to Brisbane. I'm at the airport, going through customs, and I. I feel like the only reason why I had to get my bag searched like like more because I had um a temporary passport because uh, my my passport like I ran out of pages that summer and I didn't have time to get a new passport before I left so yeah. I had a temporary passport and so like I guess they put me in that that section where I had to get my bags checked and while we're waiting to get my bags checked he sees the search dog and he starts barking going oh, crazy no. we're, we're barking going crazy and the airport shuts down. Everyone's like, what the? I'm like, like, what's what, what, what's wrong? You know what it's I'm just saying? Just a dog. Just a dog, like, what's wrong? Like, oh, you can't have him, blah, 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 this, that. I'm like, well, he's on my ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, like, I really didn't know. Yeah. And so my whole last season, they were investigating, like, me, pretty much, you know? Wow, bro. F trying to figure out this situation, trying to figure out why I was able this to get him. This motherfucker lived in Turkey. Yeah. Right next to Syria. Nah. Right. Nah, I'm sure it all came up, for real. Like, I'm sure everything came up. But they were, they was really, like, invested. Like, they had people coming to my practice and then practice, like, wow. at least twice a month. What'd they do with the dog? Oh, I had to send him home. Yeah, yeah. They gave me two choices. They said either yeah. send him home or kill him. Yeah. And I said, well, one of those is not an option. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Killing him not an option. Like yeah, it's not. It's my like, fucking dog. It, yeah, it's like my like I, he's like not even a year old. You know what I'm saying? Like he's my dog. So I sent him home, and yeah, it was crazy. Like that whole year, they was like pretty much invest sending someone to just 
oh, so Lamar, this is what you said in this transcript. I'm like, are y'all serious? Like, the dog's long gone. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it was crazy. Dude, fuck. Yeah, it was I crazy. Had no idea yeah, about that. yeah, it was crazy. It was everywhere. Like, I had people DMing me, like, writing me, like, oh, like, trying to bring your dog. I'm like, so obviously the news article was he tried to smuggle his dog in. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I didn't try to smuggle my dog. And I called. He's like, on my ticket. Yeah, he's on my ticket. I called in. So, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Dude, I, I just can't believe they let him on that flight. Yeah, he was in my like. So he's used. I bought him in Italy. Yeah. So he was used to flying. Like, and then every time I traveled in America, like I was going back and forth from yeah. Philly to L.A. Yeah. And he was with me, so he's used to flying. So when he's in his carry, he knows like just shut up and just lay there. Do you know what I'm thing, saying? Yeah. yeah. Like just be quiet. Like when it's time to get out, you're good. And he was good the whole flight. Not a peep Dude, can out of you him. Imagine if you got him through. If I would have had a different passport, he would have got through. If That's I would have had, hectic, yeah, because when I land, when I came through this this year, um, I had I had a, a normal passport and they just let me straight through. I'm like, wow, imagine if I would have had my dog now, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I, I guess when I went to leave, it probably would have been an issue. Yeah, that you know was a, yeah, yeah, you never it, know. Yeah, it would have been an issue, but yeah, it was crazy. Dude, I bought my dog back for America. Yeah, and uh, it cost me like ten grand. Shh. It took like almost a year Damn. to like deal with it. Yeah, oh, because wow. like. They have to stay in quarantine, yeah. the home quarantine, for 45 days. 45? Yeah, so I so how it worked was I had my best friend still lived in America, like the people that I lived with, so yeah. my dog stayed with them. Okay. And then you have to do this test because the reason it's a problem is Australia doesn't have rabies. rabies yep. Yeah. So then you have to do like the titer test, which is the rabies thing. That need that takes six months. That they have to sit on that test for six months. Like this is how crazy the process yeah, is, that's dude. Crazy. So yeah, they have to sit on that test for six months. Has to be negative. They test it. Has to be negative. Six months later, they test it. Has to be negative again in six months. And then once that happens, you start the forty-five days of wow. in-home quarantine. So like it was like every every week, sometimes twice a week. He had to go to the vet to get like shots, tests, like all this that's shit, right? Like, bro, it's fucking gnarly. Yo, so that's then, crazy. get this: on the last day, all the doctor had, all the vet had to do. So my dog's good. Yeah, had the test, done every appointment, the whole deal. On the last test that he had to do, he had to get like one blood test and a flea treatment. Uh -huh. Right, that's it. Yeah, and then, literally, the company was picking him up and putting him on the plane the next day yeah. or two days later and this is all like in melbourne right no no, no this is in the u.s still. Oh, it's in the u.s this is before oh, wow. i even before he can even fly here oh damn yeah so so then on that last one the fucking vet gives him the wrong brand of flea treatment get the fuck out of here are you serious i swear bro so, i swear so what happened the whole thing had to start again no I swear, what bro yeah it fucked my life dude it was like it cost me so much money. I lost so, the, so much. So sleep. what did the vet like? The, he just said sorry, bro. Like we he had was, a fight. We had a fight. How did it fight him? Well, I was here. I oh, was in. Wow. I was in Brisbane. Damn. And, and then so I'm deal, dealing with all of this with my friends. So dude, I was devastated, bro. Wow. I like haven't seen my dog in nearly a year at this point. I've had him for seven years. I got him when he was. I found him on a golf course in America. Wow. Like this, and it was the same thing with me. Like. He traveled all over with me. I had him as like a service dog. He used yeah. to come on all the planes with me. Like he used to do all my big film trips with me. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. So then we had to do the 45 days again. It went smooth. He flew over here. It was 10 days in quarantine in Melbourne, yeah. which isn't that big a deal. Yeah. And then like the, the whole thing, dude, like it was so gnarly. Yeah, like even crazy. on the day that he was supposed to fly back to Brisbane. So like Melbourne to Brisbane to see me. Yeah. The It was just too hot. So they're oh, like, so we're they're, not going to put him on the plane. Oh, wow. So then I had to wait even another. I was just like, fuck yeah, me, yeah, dude. Well, like, I'm how this is so bad. So, man. yeah, like, that's how hard it actually is. Like, it's, it's crazy, dude. So you see how you just explained that process to me? No one explained that process to me the whole time I'm on the phone <laughs> with Qantas. I'm on the phone. I call Qantas. I call American Airlines. Like, I'm like, no one explained this process yeah, to me. that's crazy Like, to me. And I'm like... They, everyone knows I'm American. It's like on my ticket, it's on my passport. Like obviously, like I don't know the process of how to get. And you shouldn't pet. know. Yeah, like, like wh why would you know that? <laughs> like, I, for, for, to my knowledge, when I, I bought him in Italy, 
Uh, Got them especially in, because yeah. you've already taken them already take countries. already taken them in and out of the like the yeah. U.S. You know, so yeah. it's like went to Italy. Like, all right, cool. Like, not, I needed absolutely nothing for that. You know what I'm saying? I needed nothing for him to get to America. Yeah. But now it's like all of a sudden I come to Australia. It's like, I'm like, why didn't someone explain this quarantine process to me? Like, no one explained it to me. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that was like their thing. Like, I didn't get in trouble with like I guess the Australian government because throughout the the transcripts no one explained this yeah, process to me yeah. you know what I'm saying I'm like like I've called and spoke to y'all like three or four times now why is no like why is this why has this never been brought up you know what I'm saying so yeah it was crazy welcome to Australia man no rabies but you got 40 foot bats you know what I'm saying yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's crazy <laughs> that is pretty funny yeah. yeah yeah well dude it's the same for Hawaii like you couldn't take your dog to Hawaii really they don't have it's, rabies Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, dude. And that's like a part of the states. Yep. Yeah, see, I, I, I didn't know this stuff. Like, But now I know, like, wherever I travel, it's like, all right, like, look up the. Did you end up getting your dog over here at all? No. Nah, so like, I just, I just get. I, yeah, it's not. It's, it's not, it's, not it, worth the season's it. only six months, you know? Yeah. So it's like not even worth it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. do you just. So you just fly in, do the season, then go home? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And so you said you got kids at home? Yeah. Yeah. Two boys. Okay. How old yeah. are they? 11 and 5. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. So you had kids pretty young then? Yeah. Yeah. How young? <laughs> I was 16 when the oldest. So in college, 17 when in the college oldest. No, that's fucking. high school. High school, you was fucking. Yeah. That's high school. Damn. Then I, then I had my youngest in college. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like right, right before my last year. Yeah. Yeah. Same mom? Nah. Yeah, okay. Come on. I'm 16 years old. Yeah, like, college, I, yeah. I was just trying to, hey, hit, I was trying to hit whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, but nah, it was cool. Like, I, I mean, their moms are great. You know, like, I don't. Yeah, it's not like yeah, a bad deal. It's not yeah. a bad deal. I yeah. don't got the baby mama drama yeah. that you know that you'll hear about, but it's all good. Like this is, we got a good, great co-parenting system. Kids are good. They'll they'll be over here for Christmas. So yeah, it'll sweet. Be good. Do yeah. they? How do you work it? Like, do they live in the same city and all like? One, one, well, yeah. One, my youngest, his mom, she, she she can't sit still. She needs to move. So she lives in North Carolina right now. I believe she's moving in the year or something. I don't know next year or something. And the oldest, he lives in my city. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. So I mean, when I'm home, I grab them all together. Yeah. Then we just hang out for the summer. Yeah. You know. Um, and then like like I try to get them over here as much as possible. Like now they're both in school, so they come only when they can. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's cool. Yeah, I mean, fuck. Like, I guess there is no ideal. So you know, circumstance like you just gotta like make it work. You just right? gotta make it work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for my thing, like the good thing is that I made those not mistakes, so to say. But like, listen, like y'all, like gotta make sure y'all got your life situated. Like for them, like just me giving them advice off my life experiences. Yeah. Like make sure your life is situated. Make sure you have kids with someone you're with. You know what I'm saying? Like you're married to and stuff like that. Just so yeah, it limits the. The, the issues the that issue, can the come back up, yeah. and forth yeah. and all that is yeah, I mean it's cool that we we figure out a system that works for yeah. us but I know a lot of people who don't have it that way yeah you know what I mean I got a lot of like I got friends who haven't seen their kids for like years you know yeah so, yeah so I, I don't I don't got it that like, I'm good I've been blessed in that area yeah and I mean like dude there's definitely like not that I can talk about being a father I don't yeah. have kids but it's like I mean you can see fathers that are around every single day. Yeah. but they're not really around for their kids you yeah, know? yeah so it's like being around for your kids doesn't mean that you're there every day yeah yeah true i mean yeah for me i wish i was around more but i mean like the fact that i'm able to make sure they have everything they need yeah and then want because both of them are spoiled yeah you know what i'm saying so it's like um like it it, it it helps me keep going a little bit you know what i'm saying it's like all right cool like as long as they're good like i'm good you know what yeah I'm saying? like yeah, I like to spend more time with them, but it's like it's almost like a part of like your fatherly duties is like to be that provider. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's, it's got to be some sacrifices somewhere. Yeah. yeah, does that does that pressure help? Do you think like to try and provide? Um. Yeah. I mean, it, like like I said, it's like you really can't take like like you, you can't take no time off. I feel like like you know like because like you're doing this for a purpose outside of yourself. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, if for yourself, sometimes you can, like, get lazy or you can get sidetracked or something like that. But for me, it's like, all right, like, I can't. I got to make sure I'm working this hard or make sure I got this going on just so I can make sure I get a good deal next time or 
to make sure I can keep them living the way yeah. I want to live, and on top of that, live the way I want to live. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I mean, it keeps you going. Yeah, for sure. And make sure you always got like an avenue, like where you're just being able to provide. Yeah. Yeah. Was Was basketball always a sport that you wanted to do? Because I, I, I feel like with basketball, it's like such an interesting sport because it's so genetic specific, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you, you have to be fucking super tall yeah like to make you know yeah but it's like i wonder like you look at lebron lebron james or like someone like yourself like yeah. physically athletically like i think now too we're starting to see it with guys like john jones deontay wilder yeah like both of those dudes probably could have been in the nba yeah but they're like have sort of gone outside of it like were you athletic in like all the other sports or did you just always want to do basketball because you were tall yeah no i, I like i play i played football growing up um, but basketball for me was like it, you know what I mean? Like this is the sport I want to do. Um, yeah, mainly because I feel like my bro- I have two older brothers who played and I just wanted to be better at them, better at basketball than them. Yeah. Okay. So it just got to like, all right, this is what I'm going for. This was my goal. And then once I got better than them, I was like, all right, how can I be better than this guy playing in California or better than, you know, cause like online it's like crazy. Like you got like the ranking system and yeah right and you got you see guys that you played against going to this college and it's like man I know I'm better than this guy but this guy's going to like like Duke and North Carolina you know what I'm saying yeah. like stuff like that it's like alright like but yeah you know what I mean so it's like just adding that extra like chip on your shoulder like because like you said it's like it, you're not like you're pretty much born into being a basketball player yeah cause you, like your, your, your size your body shape and everything and yeah it's God given you know what I'm saying so it's not really not something like oh like I could just work at it if I was like five three and like how yeah, you, you, you know ain't you know playing saying? you're not playing you're not playing basketball like not yeah. not not at a high level you know what I'm saying but um yeah so it's like once you have that gift it's like all right like well take it like take it seriously so like yeah. from like a young age like my brothers had me in the gym um, were you the tallest like out of your I, brothers uh we're all about the same height okay like one's like six three I'm six four my oldest is like. I'm six five, like, and my oldest is like six four, six five. So it's like we're all like in that same area, yeah, you know okay. what I mean? So they they easily like my oldest. He played college basketball, and then the the one in the middle he played college football. Yeah, right. But he wanted to play basketball, but it was just football was like he had a better offer for football. Yeah, you know what okay. I'm saying? So what position did he play? Quarterback. Yeah, yeah right. He went to Syracuse. Um, he he. The only reason why I feel like he wasn't in the NFL is because he had tore the ACL twice. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, I mean, it's like little stuff like that that can yeah, that's, detour that's you. That's college, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's like crazy. Sport. Yeah, so, I mean, he was, in my eyes, of course I'm going to say it, I'm biased in my brother, yeah. but I feel like he was coming out, he was one of the better quarterbacks. Like, I watched him play against all these other good quarterbacks that got drafted, and I'm like, he throws like he throws better, he's just as accurate as these guys. Like, he's more agile, he can move, you know what I'm saying? But it's just, like, I feel like his receiving crew, was never that good yeah as well and then like he had two injuries you know but he had it like and he still was almost there you know like he was signed to like I think the Eagles or something like that and then a tight end gets hurt and they need to sign a tight end you know what I'm saying so yeah they had to cut, you know yeah. what I'm saying so it was like he really didn't get his shot you yeah. know what I'm saying but yeah um, that's just sports though yeah, yeah dude the whole like the whole college thing in America is such a fucking animal eh? Man, like it's crazy and then to the the thing that's crazy is the football like that these dudes play for free yeah and like the teams are making fucking guac that yeah that's it's a crazy that's basketball game, too though like 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 for my school while I was there basketball was the better like we were the better team so we were bringing in mm. like a lot of like a lot of money yep just by every game I played in at Pitt was sold out sold out home um, games yeah um, merch. Yeah, so all that like TV, TV, shit. Yeah. like every all my games were on TV. You know what I'm saying? Like ESPN and we're on CBS and like all our games are on TV. Um, the football teams too. Like football team was really good. Um, but it's like I think ne- just yesterday or just today they allow players to make money off their names in college. Yeah, okay. But the whole the whole existence of college football, uh, yeah. college sports was. Only the universities making money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're, so we're bringing in millions and millions and millions of dollars and not getting none of like, oh, we get a scholarship. But it's did like, you think about that shit when you were playing? Nah, because it like you didn't really think about it because like you just were was grateful to be there. But it's like I know for guys like 
like um who like John Wall or like you know what I'm saying or some guys who had like crazy names in college like Zion for yeah. instance Zion Williamson like if he was allowed to make money while he was at Duke he he would he would have been a millionaire already you know what yeah. I'm saying like the way which there's probably like a balance that you don't really want kids to be millionaires but at the same time it's like well, I don't know. Like, should you fucking struggle yeah. until you cut, yeah. until you that's what get I'm saying. the NBA? So, so there's a lot of like, so you have a lot of guys who get in trouble because they're accepting money from like alumni or you have schools paying yeah. players to come to their schools. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, which is like all illegal. Shit, yeah, yeah, it's all illegal. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that wouldn't have to be done if these guys can make money off their own name. Like, you wouldn't have to pay. Like I'm sure, like Zion got paid. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I'm sure, like yeah. like there's a lot of guys who got paid to go to the certain schools. Like I'm, sh- you know what I mean. Like, like so, like Ben Simmons for for instance. Like he went to LSU, which is probably like there's no way in hell LSU gets Ben Simmons. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Without yeah. giving him something, yeah. you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. like you Do know what I mean. Yeah, like like okay we know you know what I mean like yeah. but like if, if if he was allowed to make money off of his own name and not have to worry about his he eligibility he could just go to the best school he could just go to whatever school he yeah. wants like you'll have it, it, I feel like it would level out the college like the playing field because you can have guys who will stay home more you know what I mean yeah, or, true, you know huh? what I'm saying yeah, like, they don't have to leave they don't have to leave like, yeah. cause like most of your money is gonna come from people that, like yeah. you know what I'm saying so it's like stay home and next thing you know you're like part owner of a dealership at home yeah, you true. know what I mean like in college so it's like uh, it. I think they just now allowed that rule like today where they can do that but college is it's crazy cause the best players went to like the teams that paid the most pretty much yeah and the, the crazy thing too is like you just not you're not even remotely closely guaranteed to play in the pros. Yeah. Like how many dudes play college football bash the fucking brains out of themselves for four or five years or like your brother, ACLs, no pro contract. So it's like you grind and the whole time you're making money for other people. And then it's like, imagine if you could make money enough in college to at least buy a house. Something. Debt free, paid off. Right. Like get a business started. Exactly. Something, yeah. Like, Cause it's I, like you, you're high and dry. Like yeah. you could be a college star, but never play pro they, football. They, my brother has a statue of himself, a little statue that Syracuse sold. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like they're making money off this. You yeah. know? And he, his his thing was he was able to get one statue. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. like that's crazy. Like, like if if you give players these opportunities, like, like it would limit a lot of like the illegal stuff that goes on in college yeah. basketball like you got like sneaker sneaker contracts uh sneaker uh companies like pretty much helping teams get like like Nike sponsors Duke oh well we want to make sure Zion signs with Nike when he's done so alright we're gonna pay Duke to pay Zion to make sure he's a Nike you know what I'm saying like yeah. it's crazy like like I'm not saying that's what happened but, but yeah. these are the situations you know what I'm saying yeah so, yeah. so it's crazy yeah, that, that whole thing as always. And it doesn't really exist. Like, I guess the only other place it exists is like the Olympics. Yeah. Because like in the Olympics, you can't get paid. But it's like a lot of this, like for swimming and shit. Like, yeah. But they're allowed they're, to have their endorsement deal though, right? Uh, I think it gets weird. Really? Like, because like if you're, because I know that they're like, I'm pretty big into golf. I don't mm-hmm. know if you follow golf much. I don't follow, but I like it. Yeah. So Rory McIlroy mm-hmm. was going to be in the golf, in the, like the Olympics for Ireland. Yeah. But he was sponsored by Nike and the Irish Olympic team was sponsored by Reebok. Oh, wow. So he wasn't. So like shit like that. Yeah. That's crazy. So like, yeah, the, that whole thing just gets like so fucking wishy-washy doesn't yeah, it yeah yeah it's crazy like when you got all these different sponsorships and stuff i mean but if they're paying you x amount of dollars like hey like all right cool like i'll rep that and rep that only if you're giving me 20, yeah. million, 20 million dollars a year you know yeah. what i'm saying like, it's easy yeah it's easy to say all right like i ain't, I ain't messing with reebok you know yeah. What I'm saying? So, yeah yeah what was it like to be a star in college like it's got to be fucking kind of weird to be that young and just it was. I mean, I wasn't like a mega star. Like I feel like in Pittsburgh, like yeah, I but was in, like yeah. walking around your city. Yeah, it was cool. Like it stuff. was like it was cool being like, oh, like hey Lamar, like can I get your, you know, what I'm saying, get your autograph. It was like it's, it's fun. You know what I mean? Like it's definitely something like you embrace and like you just soak up and love. You know what I mean? Um, 
it, it helps out. Like I was able to get into the club when yeah. I was like 18 years old. You know, you gotta be 21 in America. So it was like, and we're like going through like the back door and stuff like that. So it, it was like the perks of it is good. Like, I mean, I could probably speak on it now. Like getting like little like couple dollars from like some like like alumni or something like that or being able to go do stuff that like they just want you there you know what I mean yeah like, so it, it was fun for sure definitely can it be too much though do you think like at that a young age like is that a lot of shit to sort of handle for a young dude yeah uh yeah like it depends like I know for me it wasn't as bad because like it wasn't like I wasn't getting pulled from everywhere you yeah. know what I mean like I was it was pretty much localized but then you have guys, like I said, like like the big name guys who pretty much got to worry about everything. And then you got to worry about people who are trying to just be a part of your clique just because they want uh, some of that, that that limelight, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or they want you to do something for them. Or it's like a lot of stuff you got to worry about. Yeah. You got to worry about like your ninth cousin coming out of like you know what I'm saying like people you never even heard of yeah like like I like I know I had it. as soon as I got drafted I had oh what up cousin like bro never I don't even know who you are you know yeah. what I'm saying or like people asking you for money it's like like I had someone ask me like oh like can I can I can I get 2k I'm like are you talking about the basketball game or like yeah. you know what I'm saying like what are you talking about here but it's like it, it's crazy like but that's why you got to like have a close circle yeah people that you you know you can trust and then even then like you still have stories of guys who yeah. pretty much get robbed from like their business accountants and stuff yeah. like that so it's it's a crazy world what was your circle like then no I, I always been like close knit I never had like too many too many people like I always had like I'm one of those guys I get along with everyone Yeah. but like when it came down to it like, like if you've seen me you know I was gonna be with these this person or you yeah. know what I mean like like if you wanted to get a hold of me, you know who to reach out to. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, like, like I, don't, I, don't, I didn't have a lot of people. I didn't have a big clique. I didn't have an entourage. It was yeah, just me and like two homeboys, and and I have like my brothers or something like that. And then got my mom. You know, so it was like it wasn't. It wasn't like I didn't have too many people like coattail. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah you, cool. Have you been around that stuff though? Like where you've seen like the full entourage deal and like yeah, I, yeah, of course. Like like I've seen it. Like I've like. Like just being in the NBA, like you have like a bunch of guys who have like a bunch of people living with them. Yeah. Um. Like got a bunch of their homeboys like living with. Them. I'm like, dang. Like I don't understand how you can have like three of your homeboys living with you and your girl. Like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. Like then like like I was in Vegas and I seen like Floyd and I seen Floyd's entourage, Floyd Mayweather. I'm like, yeah. dang. Like he has a, a lot of people who you know what I mean who pretty much depends on him to support you know what I mean like I there's no way in hell I'm like introverted in that aspect yeah, you know what I'm saying okay. I can't be around too many people too long you know what I'm saying so but I, it's definitely crazy though yeah, yeah you see it so much over yeah, there yeah and it's sure. like it just seems like it's such a part of the culture right? Man, it seems yeah. fucking weird to me yeah but I, I, I guess it's just like some people feel obligated you know what I mean because it's like yeah, I've, I've known okay. you since we were in diapers and it's like you almost feel obligated to have cause like you're the, you're the guy who's making all these millions and then it's like you wanna have fun with you, you wanna have fun with people that you know like you love and trust so it's like like alright you just come with me you know what I'm saying so whenever I go out you're coming out with me whenever I travel you're traveling with me you know what I'm saying so yeah. it's like there's there's people like that you know what I'm saying cause it's like like basketball like there's so many moving parts like you don't like there's like a lot of relationships in basketball but there's also like people who pretty much get tired of their teammates you know what I'm saying like yeah. who just want to be with people that they grew up around who fully understands them so you want to keep them close like yeah. I know for me I had one of my homeboys travel to me to like a few of the places I went to like just because like I was alone you know what I'm saying yeah. so like, like you don't want to be alone all the time so yeah, I mean, yeah, because that's what I was just thinking then is like maybe these guys just like aren't super prepared to be alone. Yeah, like getting like growing up, you're not used to it. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it takes pretty like you pretty get you got to be really confident with yourself to just be able to spend time with yourself. That's what you know, I like, that's what I feel like. As yeah, well. like you really got to be like and then like because basketball is so crazy. Like you got guys who are like superstars at one stage of their life, and then next thing you know, they're not. So it's like, but they're still making good money. But it's like, damn, like. Like you fell off, you fell off yeah. a little, but you really didn't. Like you yeah. just had a new level, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So now you got to work your way through that level. But it's like, it's like, it's like so, you and you're used to having these people with you. Like they've been there from high school, they've been there from college, and now it's like you're in the NBA. It's like you're making all these millions. So it's like 
this is stuff we talked about when we were younger like oh we want to go here we want to do this yeah and now it's like all right well i can pay for it i can do it so let's, let's just go do it you know what i mean so do you think that the europe thing made you feel a bit more comfortable with like being alone uh yeah well i always kind of like i when i was in high school i transferred from like my hometown to a school in new jersey yeah my senior year where i felt like i was really alone and that was kind of the start of it like i was able to get out the house and and just pretty much be on my own even though i lived on campus it's like i didn't really know those guys that yeah. were there like i had teammates like we were close we were cool but it's like at the same time it's like like how well like i only I only known you for a couple months yeah you know what i'm saying so that kind of started it and then like going through college um I, I wasn't really alone in college but like like europe and being stuff like that like yeah like you're alone like you know what i'm saying like then you got to like practice twice a day it's like it's just sort of stressful yeah. you know what i'm saying because like you're getting sick and tired of like your coach and european coaches are crazy they're yelling cursing all all the time and it's like they got you working extra hard it's like fuck like <laughs> yeah. i need a break you know what i'm saying so it's like like that's when like you like it's good to have some friends around because yeah. like takes your mind off of but isn't it good like then if you can deal with like that shit yeah. on your own like do you think that that would make you like a sort of a mentally more oh, solid hell dude? yeah absolutely like yeah like europe isn't for everyone yeah like, I'm, i can like there's probably i would say at least a third of the nba wouldn't be able to survive in yeah. europe you know what i'm saying just because it's not for, for everybody like i know guys who are chasing that nba dream who sometimes get called up sometimes most of the time aren't called up they're still playing in like the g league yeah and those are the guys that you could tell like Europe is just not meant for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause Europe is, it's a grind, it's a 10 month season. You got practicing twice a day. You play, sometimes you play only one game a week. You may play two games a week. Um, so it's like, you're pretty much grounded for a lot of that. Like you're stuck. Yeah. And, and, and if you're not living in a, in a nice city, like I, like I always made it a point to make sure I will enjoy the city that I'm in. Yeah. Um, like when I was in Italy, I was in Torino, which is an hour from Milan. It's a great city. The food was amazing. The architect, everything was great. But it's like I couldn't imagine being in spending ten months in like 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 South Russia or something, like yeah. Southern Russia. You know what I'm saying? Like I would go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. It's like there's not much positives you can pull out of yeah, it. Yeah, it's like it's like grounds for depression. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's just like <laughs> I'm just gonna go there to be depressed for ten months. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. <laughs> Like the good thing about it, like the money normally is good, so it's like, all right, well, that, if that's the aspect that you want to live with, like, hey, like, yeah. But for me, it's like I got to be comfortable, or I'm gonna just be sick and tired of it. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be ready to get up out. Like, I was in China, and I was miserable. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But China was only two, three months, so I was able to get through that. But ten months of living somewhere that you just don't like, being around a culture that doesn't understand you doesn't even speak English. Plus, you look so fucking different yeah. to everybody. Yeah, like, it's crazy. You, you can't go anywhere. Hell no. Unless it's, like, at home. Yeah. And look like a fucking regular person. In China, like. in China, like, in China. <laughs> Especially Asia, bro. Yeah, I was walking around China, and the I was there twice. So, last summer, I was there, and I was in a city that weren't many uh, foreigners. Like, yeah. I don't even think foreigners were allowed. Like, I, w I wasn't allowed to get a work visa because I was living in the city. And I will, I will, I will, I will, yeah, I will walk around to go to like the store or something, and people were like taking pictures with their phone, like snapping, fi like I was a zoo animal. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just crazy. Like, like they're really like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, I up. see you taking a picture. You know what I mean? And it's like no one spoke English. It was like, like oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like, like just, for real, yeah. like, like oh, look at this. I had like taxi drivers acting like they're fixing their hair and just take a quick self. I'm like, bro, like, are you serious? Like, you're obvious as hell, like, doing yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, that's crazy. That would be yeah. such, like, a weird feeling of isolation. Man, yeah, it was crazy. Like, and the first part of that season, <laughs> I didn't have another American on my team. Oh, I had yeah. another dude. He was from, a, like, Serbia, and he didn't speak English. So I was, he talk was boring as yeah, fuck out there. Yeah, for sure. Talking about, <laughs> talk about being alone, that was being alone. Like, I'm in the other side of the world, different time zone, like, I mean, a communist country, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to, like, figure out a way to get by just to get on Instagram and Netflix and shit like that. So it's like, like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like, what, the money was good. Like, uh, that's all I can, like, bank on. Like, the money's good. I'm playing basketball. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, 
You got to find the positive. Got to find the positive. As but when as it's it, done, like, do you look back and you're like, you know what? I fucking did it. Yeah, of course. Like, because it, like it's an accomplishment to do something that you sort of don't want to do. Yeah, right? for sure. Uh, it's and that's life. Like, there's gonna be curveballs where it's like, damn, like, do I really want to be here? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, how do you find like the motivation to wake up every morning and go do what you got to do? You know what mm. I'm saying? So for me, it was my kids. Yeah. yeah so well, that's like me and Justin, yeah. the guy that was in here before. Like, he's had the craziest career, dude. Like, yeah. the path that you that it looks like to be a professional motocross and supercross rider yeah. like he literally everything was yeah, different yeah. like he rode a supercross track for the first time when he was like in his fucking 20s oh really you know oh wow so it's like that's late for any sport exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah that's crazy yeah. so but you know for for him it was like we were just saying it's like you look back at that that yeah. process and it's like it's always valuable to go through like that crazy shit like yeah. even, maybe not career wise but just like as a dude yeah that that's why they say the first thing i was told i forgot who told me when i was like going through the draft process the first thing i was told was it's a marathon not a sprint yeah dude. and it's like that's like that's like the realest thing i've heard you know what i mean because it's like you see like all the gla- like all the fame and all like like dang i can't wait to get there i can't wait to get this i can't wait to buy this i can't wait to do this and it's like you really got fucking wait. You got to work for this. You got to do this. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Like you might get setbacks and all like shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's crazy. And I guess like at the end of it, like you've really just got to love basketball. Got to. Like that's got to be the thing. Got that, to. Got to yeah. love it. Got to love it or it's not worth it. Cause yeah. like you go through a lot, you know what I mean? Like just within one year, like you may be playing, you may not be playing, you may get hurt. You know what I'm saying? You may get cut. Yeah. Like you go through a, like this is all within, this can happen in one year for somebody you know what I'm saying and if you don't love the sport of basketball you're gonna be miserable you know what I'm saying so like for myself it's like I always gotta like you, know, you love this <laughs> you know what I mean this is what you want you know what I'm saying so it's like alright yeah it's easy to do it once you love it yeah yeah and I guess a guy yeah. like like you've had a like obviously like a journeyman's career yeah like being absolutely. all over the world like yeah. you sort of you must genuinely love got to. basketball got to yeah, um, where did, where did that come from then? Do you think like why do you love it so much? Just growing up as a kid, like just like when I was like when I was like eight, nine, ten years old, like just being able to wake up in the summertime and just all right, ma, I'm gonna see you later, and just go play basketball all day, like you know what I'm saying, and like that's where like the love was just built, and then just watching like NBA games growing up, like I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan, mm. like and just like oh I can't wait to get there and then like having like I played against Kobe one time so like having that experience is like damn like this basketball brought me here you know what I'm saying to like the same court as Kobe I'm like guarding him you know what I'm saying so it's like it's crazy like you know what I mean like like basketball it's like it can bring you a lot of places yeah. get, like give you a lot of different opportunities like I've met so many great people I've been so many great places like I was able to go on vacation because of basketball yeah like like I've been a lot of places in the world you know what I'm saying like being on this island being at this like hotel like because of basketball you know what I'm saying so it's like that's where like I find the love of it because it's like the opportunities are so like unlimited almost because of basketball yeah so what was the first uh, NBA team that you played for Atlanta Hawks yeah Yeah, so I I played with them played with them for a year got cut went to the Kings for like a preseason went to like the D League team which is like the development league yeah um Played there for like two months, and then Atlanta called me back, and I went back to Atlanta. Yeah, motherfuckers. Are... Yeah, so <laughs> you should uh, never call me. Yeah, nah. I mean, it was it was cool though. Like, it's, yeah, like that that was it's my business, NBA huh? experience. Yeah, so I mean, it was fun. You know what I mean? Like, I like would I like to go back for sure, but it's like, like I'm finding love with, like being in Australia. Like, I love Brisbane. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And every time I say that, people are like, Dang, you like? I'm like, yeah. Like, I told my agent the other day, I'm like, yeah, like, I really like Brisbane. Like, he's like, oh, you like it that much, huh? It's a fucking dope city. Yeah, I said, it's it's perfect for me. Like, it's not it's not too loud, but it's just, it's vibrant enough. Yeah. So, whereas, I, if I want to go do something, I can go do something. I can have a nice night out, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it, it's, I'm skipping winter. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, back home, like, it's freezing right now, probably, yeah, you know? Fuck I'm, that. So, I'm like, I'm good, like. Like I'm good here. Like I got a nice apartment right down in South Bank. It's like, yeah. it's like I'm living a life. Like why would I not want to be here? Like to go to Europe for ten months and like I'm good. Like six months is good for me. You know what I mean? 
and is the is like the pay in Australia good? Like it's, it's, it's getting, all right. It's getting there. Um, yeah. I know for Brisbane, we uh, we just sold the team to like a private private owners. Um, so to, to, there should be more money into it. Um, so I don't want to go too far. Yeah, into, yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, like it, it's growing for sure. Like yeah. there's guys in the league who are making great money. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so it's good. Does it cool like to feel a part of like growing something? Yeah, if yeah, that that's like great. Like I feel like great about that aspect for me because yeah. I know the years before I got to Brisbane, they were like the last place team. Like I think two years in a row or three years in a row, and then the year I get here, we make the playoffs. Yeah, and then this year, like 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 right now, we're like a little struggle, but like I like I feel like in our we still have the team, the depth to make the playoffs yeah. again and actually make a run this year. So like being a part of that. So the um, season's going on right now. Yeah, it's going on right now. Damn, I'm gonna yeah. come watch a game. Yeah, we play Friday. So oh we, shit! So pull up. Fucking <laughs> pull up. We, <laughs> we play Friday. We play Where Perth. Routes? And uh, it's in Brisbane. Um, it's uh, we Fuck call Perth. it. We call it. Yeah, no, you you said it. You said it for both of us. <laughs> nah, but we um we play uh we play. It's called the Armory. Yeah. Um, it's in Nathan, but it's like. It's like yeah, ten minutes from the city. It's not bad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll get you the details. Yeah. Yeah. Pull up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Q and J's coming. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna yeah, say. They'll yeah. Be they'll, there. They'll, they'll be there for sure. Those are my ladies right there. Um. But yeah, like. I'll but start. yeah, so it feels good to like be building it, building yeah. it up, and yeah. like a part of that. I definitely like if I were to win a championship with Brisbane, it it would probably be one of the biggest accomplishments in my in my career. I feel like that's just, cool, man. Yeah, because it's like just coming coming here and. And not really having no like expectations to making the playoffs to and now going into this season where I, I feel like we should be good. Like we lost three games in a row, which should not happen. You know what I mean? Like it shouldn't have happened, but there are road games too. So it's like basketball is kind of weird like that, huh? Yeah. Like because it's sort of you guys play like multiple games, right? Yeah, we like play, like uh, mini series almost. Uh, that's the playoffs is like, yeah, well, yeah, actually, you're right, mini series. So we play every team at least like three times, I think, this yeah. year. Yeah. Um, sometimes some teams we play four times. Uh, so yeah, like, like it can go any it can go any direction. Some teams can get hot at the right moment. Yeah, it's like momentum I mean? based. Eh? Then next thing you know, one player gets hurt on one team and their their seasons to shit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy what can happen. Like it's so many unknowns, so many different variables. Yeah, that can play a factor into just one game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let alone the whole season. But it, it's it's fun, though. That's why it's, like, a part of why I love it, why I have a passion for it. Mm. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine that it would just feel good as an athlete to, like, really bring something to a city and, like, yeah. offer something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> like, yeah, like I said, like, the NBL as a whole is growing in Australia. Um, I think every game's on TV here now. I think maybe uh, if not, it's you can watch it somewhere. Um, and Brisbane, I feel like it's growing as a basketball city. Like <coughs> we got so many different teams in Brisbane, so it's like being trying to make basketball the number one sport. It's gonna be tough because it's not the number one sport in Australia. Yeah, you know what I mean. But <coughs> sorry, dude. No, nah, you good? Get some fucking red coffee, go <laughs> get some water, or something, man. Don't kill yourself over here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? No, nah, um, good. It's crazy that like basketball will always be in the culture. Yeah, yeah. Like I, it's so tied to like rap music. Yeah, hip, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like it's always such a cultural sport. Yeah, I mean, because you got you got you got <coughs> rappers rappers who used to play basketball who wanted to play basketball yeah. who just weren't six 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 seven. You know what I mean? Like they turn out to be like there's actually good. Good rap, like Chris Brown actually can play basketball. Yeah, like yeah. J Cole can actually play bat. Like these guys actually p- can play. You know what I mean? Like, but they're just they're not just tall. Too short, yeah, yeah, too short. You know what I mean? Or at thirteen, they was able to rap or sing and do yeah, something else. Yeah, and, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. different career paths, different life paths. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it like as long as they keep it relevant for athletes, athletes are always gonna keep it relevant. Yeah, for, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's just always gonna be. Like like that. Yeah, yeah it's it, that it's so fucking cool. Like yeah. to and you watch how that yeah. shit plays out and yeah. like even the you know you get like 
Dude, you probably couldn't name a Drake song that doesn't have a reference to like Harden, Kobe, yeah, for sure, Jordan. I, about, I was just about to say Drake is like the biggest basketball stand ever. Like you know, what I mean? like he's, he's always like the fan of like. Well, my the chest best. The dip. Yeah, right. Was that the weirdest fucking speech of Man. you've ever heard? Like from a dude that is so talented yeah. lyrically. And, he snapped on that, and it's like he does no wrong when he gets on the track. Like yeah, it's, you know, he's he's just one of those generational. He's like. He's like the Kobe Bryant of of rap. Of rap. You know yeah, what I mean? Like he's real. like you know what I'm saying? It's like like he does no wrong. Every time he gets on a track you wanna hear it. Yeah. Like, you know, it don't matter it don't matter who's on a track with him. It could be Lil Pump. Yeah. Like any like like six <laughs> six nine or somebody. It could be anybody you still wanna hear that song because Drake's on it. Yeah. Like yeah. if I made a song and I got Drake on it, it's a hit. It'd be a hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never made a song in my life. But it's yeah. like he's always rapping about basketball. Like yeah. the, the references, dude. It's yeah. always, and I mean, it's the same with like football as well. But yeah. I just, I feel like in that world, dude, basketball is it's, like yeah, it's, it's di- so it, king. It's huh? different, just because like I feel like basketball, we can express ourselves a little bit more than football players can. Yeah, okay. um, it's not it's not as many players, and like yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? So like football, football. And as you guys have a face, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. Like there's helmets involved. Yeah, in. they got helmets. You can't really see your face. The yeah. Basketball, you can. If someone dunks on someone, you can see like yeah, like I'm talking shit to you. Like yeah, you know, football is like you may think he's talking shit, but you don't know because you can't see. But yeah, yeah, it's like that's yeah, yeah okay, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like and then it's like basketball is it's a team sport, but it's not as much of a team strategy like as football is like football you gotta have everyone on the same yeah. page like basketball if a play breaks down you get the ball to KD and let him just cross whoever up and go dunk on someone or drain a three or stuff yeah. you know what I'm saying it's like it's more like superstar dependent it, it, it's not yeah yeah well like yeah. cause every team's got like that it, yeah. you know that star yeah. well really everyone that's a starter on an NBA team is a superstar yeah. essentially it's some, it's some, uh, your contract lets you know if you're a superstar for sure yeah yeah so but um it um yeah I mean it's just it's like one of those sports where like everyone wants to have like a picking at you because like you're on TV yeah bunch you know what I mean like it's just you you got these commercials you got this everyone knows who you are because you're playing without a mask on you know what I'm saying yeah. then you can like I feel like the NBA did a great job allowing players to express themselves like LeBron he's like the like he's one of like the most famous athletes ever. ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like LeBron can't go anywhere and no one knows who like not know who he is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you could put him in some remote city, remote Amish city. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. And the Amish are gonna know who LeBron is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I feel like bas like basketball allows that to happen. Yeah. Like, whereas, You're so right, dude. whereas football it's like you got like Tom Brady, but I feel like as good as he is, like you could put Tom Brady somewhere Somewhere in this world, and someone might not know who he is. Like I yeah. feel like if Tom Brady comes to Australia, everyone's not gonna know who Tom Brady is. I agree with that. Everyone's gonna know who LeBron is. Yeah, you know what I mean. And they're both the greatest at their sport right now. Do you reckon that's tied into like that rap hip hop culture as well? Like because they're so advertised. <laughs> I, I don't like rap and hip hop. I feel like it's big out here, but it's not that big. It's like I guess no, nah, mm. nah, it's big out here. Yeah, I, I feel like. It's definitely not as big, yeah. but I think that like the it just seems like that crossover is yeah. like always yeah, just it's like, always being it, talked about. It always. makes them do yeah. so yeah. big. Yeah. Eh? yeah, it's that. It's in the music. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's it's, it's just, just like everywhere. cultural. Yeah, huh? it's everywhere. And then you got like social media and yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I yeah. think you're right about that whole thing with like it. it there's like it is a recipe for like making superstars. Yeah. There's five dudes on a team. Yeah. There's only 10 guys on a court. Yeah. And, like, it is very, like, yeah, when they're dunking, they're, like, flexing on each other. And yeah, it's, it's, like, it's very, like, aggressive, but it's not, it's not It's not fighting. Violent. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's, but it's, like, it's, it's able, yeah, yeah, it's allowed you to be, like, a badass pretty much mm. on a court, like, all right, like. You can really showcase who yeah, you, like, because Steph Curry ain't, like, he's not like this intimidating dude but he's got his own brand yeah he got his own persona yeah. and it's like when Steph is dribble 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 shoot in your face and it's like yeah. that's disrespectful as hell like yeah, yeah. it's almost just as bad as getting dunked on yeah like, cause it's like he like dribbles dribbles and like you get like I feel like Steph he gets to the point where he knows he's fucking with you like he's just playing with you at this point yeah like he's just he don't have to keep dribbling but he'll do it behind his back 
shoot it, turn around before it goes in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. Like his like he Humble don't brag. yeah yeah he got he got that like like yeah like yeah I just shit it on you but it's like I ain't gonna I don't need to tell you yeah I don't need to tell you like you know already you know yeah. what I'm saying like like whereas you got guys who like a, like a LeBron like he'll dunk on you or Katie will dunk on you and look at you like yeah you know what I'm saying yeah. like give you that look like yeah I just made you look like this tall. You know what I'm saying, but it, like that, like the NBA allows you to have that. Yeah, you know what I mean, like and just the fact you know, like you can do that, you can make a play on your own. There's not many plays in football you can do on your yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, like basketball, you can see guys come down against the whole team, uh, the other team, and score on them. Yeah. Football, it's hard for a running back or a wide receiver to get the ball and then just. Break down the whole defense. It happens. Yeah, like that's why those guys like Odell Beckham, yeah, Saquon Barkley, are like make a start because they do shit like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But then you got guys who are just really good at their craft, like Larry Fitzgerald. But like, if you put Larry Fitzgerald everywhere, like no, one, like not many people are gonna know who yeah. he is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. dude, fucking Odell is like, yeah, that's the G, right? Yeah, there. and that's because he has that. That persona, like you see him Same dancing, yeah, like you know what I mean. Like you can see all that, you know what I'm saying. So, like football is is there, but it's not it's there different. like basketball. Yeah, like basketball, everyone can, you know what I mean. Like someone can get famous by putting a ball between their legs in the game. Like you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. they can do one good thing in basketball, and next thing you know, it's like you're super famous. Well, that's so. the crazy thing about like sport in general now. Yeah, is like all we're really fucking hunting down. Is like dope shit for Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> yo, it's crazy. For real. Like, so, I, like, I, I probably shouldn't bring this up, but so bring it I, up. if like, you shouldn't bring yeah, it up, you yeah. should definitely so, bring it up. So, um, have you heard of Lamelo Ball? No. Okay. Well, like, once you, I guess, start getting into like the basketball realm more, like, he's like the biggest name in Australia right now. Yeah. Okay. He's like 17, 16, 18, something. He's like he's a teenager. He's a kid. Yeah. Um, and. He has like this. Is he an Aussie dude? No, he's just he's American. He's okay. playing. He's playing in Australia right now. Oh, sick! He has like this massive, massive name. It was like got famous because like his brother was in the NBA. His dad was like on on ESPN, like hyping his kids up. Like, oh, I got the best boys ever. Like, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, what yeah, are you yeah. supposed to do? Yeah. So we're playing the first game of the season. Um, we're playing uh, Illawarra Hawks. It's the team Lamelo plays for, and my they, he makes my teammate fall twice in one play. Yeah, right. First thing that comes to my mind is like, oh, that's going on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they they still lost, like, and he didn't play that great. But it's like, that's just, the shit that matters. That's that's what everyone wants to see. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like if you get on Instagram right now and like you're on like ESPN on Sports Center, you'll see nothing but like Lamelo Ball highlights from this league. Yeah, because he has that name. It's like that's what everyone wants to see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like it's great for the league. Yeah, like it's, all it's going to do is just bring in more money for everyone. So you think? So is, you think he'll end up being in the NBA? Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Like he, if he's not number one pick, he should be number two or three. Yeah, right. In this upcoming, is draft. he an Australian kid or no, is American? No, he's American. Right? Yeah, he's yeah, American, yeah. and then they, they just brought him over. He's not like eligible to play in the NBA so yeah. he played over here first but so you think that shit will start happening more in Australia yeah so there's another kid here who skipped out on college um RJ Hampton I believe it. yeah his name RJ Hampton he uh he skipped out on college came here um he'll be drafted um so it, it's definitely going to happen more yeah but I, I, and I think that's why the NCAA is like a little nervous so they're allowing players to get played so they don't yeah. lose that talent. Yeah. Because if they're losing the best talent to Australia and other teams overseas, yeah. they're going to lose money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they don't, like, they got to, I think them, like, kids breaking that barrier, like, nah, I don't want to go to college. Yeah. I'm going to come over here, make money, play, and then come back, go back home, go to the draft. I think it's putting pressure on the NCAA. Is this shit interesting for you to watch because you've lived all of it? Yeah, like it's 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 actually like damn, like, damn I wish I would have not yeah. went to college and played overseas and make some, you know what I'm saying? But like like I said, everyone's journey is different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like it's it's fun. Like I'm sure like guys, like that's why you get like a lot of like older players like who like are like like commentators now, like yeah. always talking shit about like the new generation players. But it's like. Like you could tell, it's like a little bit of bitterness in it because yeah, it because was, they're doing so good. Because they're doing so good, but it's like, it's like 
basketball, the world of basketball is being catered more so around the players. Yeah. Nowadays, more so than the company that they're working for. Like, before it was, oh, this team has this player. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, imagine the money Michael Jordan would have been making, like, if if they had, like, a crazy TV deal. Yeah. Like, that they have now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think the biggest contract back then was probably, like, $20 million, which is a lot of money. That's a lot of fucking money. A lot of money. But then you have Steph Curry now making 38 39 in one year you know what I'm saying yeah. like it's a big difference yeah. and is Steph Curry almost double is Steph Curry better than Michael Jordan you know what I'm saying like like it's just like I feel like just th- it's being catered more so now yeah. players can take advantage of with the owners and well there's the more company. money still, there's more ways to make money too yeah. right? as an athlete yeah for sure like, like the deals that Steph Curry would have would be fucking crazy yeah he's I think he like is part owner of Under Armour now that's crazy you know what I'm saying um like yeah, like he's making money. He got equity in that in that yeah, company. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So getting points. Yeah. <laughs> so he like, and this is because like the NBA allows the players to be the players. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they allowed all this. Like back in the day, like I feel like it was like a little more about just the NBA. Like everyone was an employee for the NBA, but now it's, like, yeah. everyone is. An employee for themselves. Yeah, everyone is their own business. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's like how the game is changing. Because athletes, bro, it's like it's it's store like what we love the sport. Yeah. But what we want is the stories. Yeah. Like we like the drama. We like the <laughs> anticipation. We yeah. like to we like to follow people. Yeah. And it's like that's what to me is so cool with doing this podcast, especially with athletes. Is like it's it's a way to like fucking highlight the person and it's like yeah. it gives you a reason to follow that person yeah. it's not because it's like everyone's good like athlete, yeah for sure they're all good it's like what have you got that's different like yeah. how can you captivate people you know in your own way yeah and yeah it's like that's what that's why i like this sort of shit because stories to me like i love jarvis landry because of like yeah. when i hear Jeez, him man. talk and the stories and the way that he um, you know the way that he grew up yeah. and what he does to give back to his family mm-hmm. and like I love that shit yeah. like I'm invested in in him yeah. you know yeah and yeah that's, that's what makes it being an athlete great you know what I'm saying because you have a fan base who are following you you know yeah. what I mean like I have a fan base that's following me you know what I'm saying like I have a bunch of friends back home like that stay up to like three, four in the morning watching the games out here. Like, that's cool. Like, huh? that, like that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like you know how like that makes me feel. Like that's like damn, I got the homies back home watching this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, and then it's like you have like random people like just hitting you up. I don't know. Hey Lamar, like I watched this game. Like damn, like what were you doing watching? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's, it's it's really it's really a blessing. Like for real. Like it's crazy. So, I mean, yeah, like just being an athlete is it's 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 one of those jobs that every, it's a desirable job that everyone wants yeah. you know what I mean not many people understand but it's like like everyone just sees like the glamour and like the fame and all the all the perks of it but it's like a lot of work that goes into it I like it's like I said it's a journey for sure yeah, yeah so. it's definitely something like I feel like your mind would always be on whether it's like just the game itself whether it's like your brand whether it's yeah. your it's like, funny you say that I don't sleep yeah. <laughs> like that's like I think I, I believe I've read that's like big in like the basketball world like insomnia like I've struggled sleeping Real. yeah like cause it's like my mind is always going yeah. like how is this gonna happen how is this gonna work it's like and that's just basketball in general like I feel like when you're out there on the court like no play is the same so it's like yeah. like you have plays to run but it's like anything can happen and you always gotta be quick on your toes you know what I'm saying so like that's just how I'm like living my everyday life like everything is just completely like I'm just thinking 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 yeah. thinking like I overthink probably dang like what's in this cup is it hot chocolate or is it coffee you know what I'm saying yeah, like yeah. you know like it's just overthinking like everything you know what I'm saying and yeah. it's probably not good but I feel like that's just basketball players in general like, like yeah. you know football players they got they get hit in the head all the time, so they they probably got their own issues. But yeah. I feel like for basketball, it's like like I like I've heard I know a lot of players who just don't sleep. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. dude, I I struggled. I fuck talk about on on the podcast all the time. Like I struggled with sleep forever yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah, but it like got it got better for me. Like as I sort of got into working and stuff, just yeah. feel like I had less 
less stress around school and shit. Yeah. But I smoke weed to help me sleep. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, we don't get that luxury. You can't, you can't do yeah, that. You can't do that. Fuck. Not 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 legally. Like yeah. without getting in trouble. Like because what's the drug testing like? Say if you smoke weed, you'd get you get fucked with like drug testing and stuff. Yeah. Um. I don't know like the punishment behind it. I, obviously you'll get in trouble I don't know I know in the NBA like you'll get suspended for a couple games yeah. for your first offense and because the NFL's allowed it now no way nope yeah. Yeah, no that, way they have I'm pretty sure no are you sure not the NFL there's no way the NFL will allow it before the NBA wait let me look this shit please up. I gotta google this shit cause this is why um, Josh Gordon is always suspended cause he's always smoking weed and getting really? caught yeah I thought that they, I thought that they had done it because there was a bunch of. Well, I wonder maybe they've changed the testing they, to where it's not as like yeah. you basically have to be fucking stoned when you do the piss. Oh, uh, maybe I don't know, but yeah. So like, I I just got tested um, last week, and they took blood from me, and I had a piss test. Damn. Yeah, and and, and it's like they pretty much holding your junk for you. Like yeah, they don't, yeah. they don't leave. So if you can't. If you can't reach, I don't know the the exact measurement you got to reach, but if you can't reach it, you're, they're staying with you all day long yeah, until dude. you reach this, how much it is. And I never seen that in Australia. It's like in college, it was like, all right, cool, go pee, go pee real quick. Like it don't matter yeah. how much it is. Like you just get a little bit in there, cool. But and then they like <clears throat> they don't harass you. Like here, like they pick like five people, and if you have a team meeting, the guy assigned to you is in a team meeting with you. Really? Yeah, like if you're like, what's the what's the company that they're with? Do you know the name of the company? Uh, I can't. Remember. Asada. It's definitely Asada. Yes. Yeah. Asada. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, some of them are just not. Yeah. So yeah. they say the NFL stance on marijuana um, is uh, adapting, but major changes will come slowly. Yeah, because I know that like the crazy thing with especially the NFL and like the injuries is like the pain management side yeah. of things, like the pain, the stress. Like and this, they're all things that like medicinal marijuana yeah. is like aimed to fix. Yeah, but it just sucks that like athletes can't, can't. Yeah, can't can't take advantage of that. But it's like, so I know a lot of the dudes, sleep thing for me. Like yeah. that's fucking huge for the sleep. Yeah, me. yeah. And it like lets me relax. Yeah, because I'm the so I'm thinking all the time too. Like I'm wide open. I've always like like everyone like my girlfriend would be like, oh, so how much more stuff have you got to do? Like how much till you come home? I'm like, I could stay here. Yeah. for days yeah. like there is no there's no like, end to it yeah there yeah. is no like Tracks. stuff to do yeah it's like the list is this fucking like how long's a piece of string yeah. so that is and it'd be the same for an athlete yeah like when you're an athlete like there's no like shut off okay the to-do list is done like there's nah, always another rep there's, there's always, always you know you can be you could be in a gym for it's like you can't like you don't want to push your body to a point of exhaustion because it's like body management yeah yeah but it's like you can like we've been in the gym for the past couple of days now for like four hours something like that like something crazy like which is long for like practice you yeah. know what I'm saying um, like in the NBA like I remember we'll go and practice for like 40 minutes on the court and then go lift and get the hell out of there you know really? what I'm saying yeah like it, like you barely practiced in the NBA like everything you did was like pretty much what you did on your own yeah right um, and then you'll get with the team and do like team stuff team practices for like a good 40 to an hour um and that's surprising yeah like because you play so many games you travel yeah, so much yeah 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 you know what i mean like like there was times where we didn't practice we practiced one time a week just because we would fly Travel. fly practice fly play get back on a plane that night play the next day yeah you know what i mean get home have that off day off get back and play you know what i'm saying like you're yeah. playing like three four games a week in the nba so it's like practicing wasn't really a necessity yeah but um, like 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 here, like we've been on the court for some time now. Like you know, what I'm saying, and we gotta like get there, lift, practice, have all these meetings, and by the time like I ride my bike to practice, yeah, like so I bike to practice and from practice, so it's just the extra cardio work. And by the time I get home, like shit, like, <laughs> but then it's like I still can't sleep. That's you crazy, know what I mean, yeah. like. Like I like I go to sleep for like a good two three hours, wake up and then be up for a couple of hours. And what are back. you doing when you're at home? Like, are you on your phone, computer, TV? I'm on all that shit. What you expect? Like Turn that I, shit off I, then. I I live twenty thousand miles from uh, yeah, you know what I mean from you. from the family. So it's like I'm on all that playing playing PlayStation. 
Um, Cause it's all, that's all stimulus. Man. Yeah. Like that's all inputs. Like, cause I think that, I think the blue that light and stuff. Well, not even that, man. Like I don't, I don't even know if I buy that shit. I feel like I buy yeah. more like the. It's just it's information, bro. Like yeah. you are having a fucking process information, like whether it's Call of Duty, whether it's social media, where, like that's. I'm shit. on. I'm on the Call of Duty heavy right now. Is too. that what you? Is that your jam? Yeah. Just, yeah. It just, so it took like two days to download, of course. Yeah. But, not, but, <laughs> but I've been so this so this morning, I, I went to sleep at I went to sleep at like eight thirty yesterday. Woke up at like twelve. 8.30 at night. 8.30 at night. Woke up at 12. Like, why'd you get, why you go to bed so early then? I was just tired. <laughs> I was just Your tired. Your shit's fucked up, yeah, I was just tired. So I just like, man, I'm just going to go lay down. So I lay down, went to sleep, woke up at 12, started playing a game. And then the problem is, is that the homies are up. Yeah, everyone's up. So, so I started like, playing a game yeah, with all the homies. Yeah, and yeah. then this, then three o'clock come around, I'm like, damn, let me just try to go lay back down. Went to sleep till like five, got back up, started playing a game again. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, you get a lot of downtime as an athlete, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, I know um, Quincy and Jane, they want me to do like, uh, like the the game streaming. So I was like, I gotta, yeah, yeah, pretty much get on, get on, get on it there. Um, so I gotta be pretty good at that. So I was like, all right, I'm get my practice time in. Yeah, you know what I'm saying get so, my reps. get my reps up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But nah, it's um, yeah, I normally don't do that though. Like normally, like if I'm like trying to go to sleep, like say I got practice the next morning, like like I'll try to go to sleep. Yeah, like I'm just up. And then it's like obviously I'm gonna pick up my phone like um, yeah like, like I'm not like I can't just sit there and just stare at the ceiling yeah dark, you know what I'm saying it's like I, I but wouldn't, see then you're taking on information bro yeah but I won't even go to sleep if I did that yeah like I'll just be sitting there looking at the ceiling I'm like I might as well do something yeah you know what I mean um like I know like I had like sleeping meds for a little bit yeah fuck like, that it wasn't like it barely you know worked shit, like yeah. it barely was working so I was like no nah, but I get your point though like I mean. I don't want to lecture you about it. I see how it works <laughs> for you. Nah, nah, nah. I get it. Nah, I already know. Like, I know yeah. I know what I'm doing wrong. I know what I'm doing. Like, it's I know hard what, not, like, and the thing is, I know what you're going through because I was in America. Yeah. All my friends were here. When that time comes, like, even my buddy, like, I was texting one of my buddies pretty late last night. He lives yeah. in Atlanta. Yeah. And I can't talk to him unless it's, unless like, it's pretty super late pretty here. Pretty late here, yeah. 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 So it's like, I, I know what that is like. But yeah. if you, yeah, I think that there's just some shit that you've got to do to get your body ready for yeah, sleep yeah and like inputs like anything that's like giving you visual information giving you like external shit in yeah like that stuff uh, i mean i don't know if i buy yeah. all the fucking light and stuff yeah. like i don't know that yeah. that's real but it's definitely like if you're stimulating your brain like yeah. dude do you ever try like reading at night and shit uh no nah, i do like um i listen to like audiobooks or something like that yeah okay um but does that shit make you tired? Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's like, like it, it makes me tired. But it's like I'll go to sleep and then I will wake up. My yeah. my issue isn't falling asleep. My issue is staying staying asleep. asleep. You know what I mean? Huh. So it's like once I'm asleep, like what's going on in that process? Yeah. Why I can't stay asleep? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, I can fall asleep anywhere. Like I can fall asleep on a plane, fall asleep on a bus, fall asleep in any hotel yeah. you know what I mean I can fall asleep in team meetings you know what I'm saying it's like I wonder if like have you ever looked into like sleep apnea or something like that nah I haven't but I think something needs to bro like yeah. you should fucking you should look into the um the whole sleep apnea thing yeah cause you like do you live by yourself yeah like you don't have a missus or anything nah, with nah, you I'm by myself fuck bro like you could be one of those dudes that like um cause it, like some just weird shit happens where like your airways get blocked yeah. And then you're not you're not breathing properly, and yeah. then it wakes you up. Yeah. So you never get into like that REM sleep. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. then that's when they've got those machines that, that can they tell me. they yeah. well they force air into your air passages, and it keeps everything open. So I got to sleep with like a big ass machine. <laughs> but they're apparently yeah. they're pretty yeah. good now. Yeah. Like they're they're actually like well, dude, I was listening to a podcast the other day with this guy who's like in his he's a really famous author, mm -hmm. and he's in his mid 50s or something like that mm -hmm. and um he was talking about like how bad his sleep was <laughs> and then he said that he did the sleep apnea test which like just lets you know how much you're waking up and yeah. all that bullshit and if you're in like REM sleep or whatever and uh anyway it basically found out that he was w like having like 70 episodes an hour of like interrupted sleep 
and then it, oh. he had wake up and he was just like what the fuck like yeah, and he's like a, he's like an old dude like yeah. he's lived his whole life like that yeah that's and crazy. he's like healthy and yeah. but yes yeah, so it turns out he had sleep apnea yeah. got one of these machines and uh he's just like dude i literally regret the last fucking 50 years of my really? life like not having this thing damn i might look into that because i, I like, definitely need it like something ain't going something not right Bro, and especially someone's, like someone's holding my nose while I'm sleeping. Something, you know what I'm saying? Something's happening. That's probably exactly yeah. what's fucking happening yeah, though. Like something's some sh- happening. Some shit's <laughs> yeah, going some, weird. Yeah, something's going on. So. Because yeah. it's like, dude, really? Like, if you look at all the facts, yeah. you're a fucking athlete. Yeah. You treat your body well. Yeah. You're not stressing on money. Yeah. You've got you live by yourself, so you're not having fucking someone in the bed waking you up. Yeah. Like you've really got a lot of the shit in order to have a pretty decent night's sleep you know what I'm saying and it's like a struggle right now at least for like since I've been back it's been a struggle like yeah. you know what I'm saying like at home I can I can is it better at home? yeah like well it's it's it's, it's good because I stay up later cause I like got the kids and it's like by the time they're asleep it's like alright like I need at least an hour or two to myself do whatever I need to do yeah Um, and then like I gotta get up early for them so it's like I sleep consistent through that but like here, it's like, like you I just gotta, don't have the routine in the same, huh? It's yeah, but I have practice in the morning. I know what time I gotta get up, and I try to go to sleep at a reasonable time. But it's like I'm waking up in the middle of the night. Yeah, every single night, I I slept one day, like eight hours straight through. You know what I mean? Like, do you feel like it fucks with the energy and shit and your uh, mood now? I don't. I think I'm still all right. I'm still managing it. All right. Like I'm still trying to figure out like. I think throughout the day I'm still sneaking in like five, six hours of sleep, but it's like broken through the day. Yeah, it's like broken sleep though. So you you're like napping a lot. I'm not napping a lot, but it's like I'll like if I'm after practice I'm at home and I'm just like laying down or something like that. I'll go yeah. to sleep for like twenty minutes, something yeah. like that from time to time. But like I try not to do that so at night I can do it. Yeah, see, that's the problem, eh? It's like gets to be like a cycle yeah. where you're like, you're not sleeping at night, so then you like try and steal these naps, but then the naps are making you not tired at night. Yeah, like so it's sort of I learned my lesson with taking naps during the day because it's like, <laughs> like you take a nap, the next thing you know, up to three in the morning. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I like I don't like I said I don't have an issue falling asleep at night because I'm making sure I don't nap too long. Yeah, but, you know what I'm saying? But it's staying asleep my issue. Yeah, that ain't, yeah, fuck. Yeah. I'm like excited to figure this out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm it's like, a mystery. I'm like, hmm, okay, <laughs> how, do we fuck, how do we get this shit to fucking yeah, to, sure. to work? Yeah, dude, that whole like sleep apnea thing is crazy, man. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, I think I'd be like so pumped if that just fixed all your shit. There you go. You, <laughs> you should get some sort of sponsor deal with the with a sleep apnea. You just well, dude, I I need to like I want to do that test for myself. Oh, uh, but like you you feel like a bit of a fucking loser like yeah having like, a machine on, yeah, you know, that's, like that's the first thing I real. thought about. Did yeah. you ever see um? I ain't gonna lie. What the hell? Hall pass? You ever watch Hall pass? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, dude's like sleeping like like I'm like I can't be sleeping like this, man. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah no, but the, it's cool. I mean, if it, if it works, I I'll, I'll do it. I'll hey, the thing is, is like. You at least you live by yourself. Yeah. Like you should definitely. Yeah, like, I can't get away with like doing weird stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and it's like who, who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah. if you're a cool motherfucker. Yeah. So what? You sleep with some fucking <laughs> shoes in your bed? <laughs> it's just, we're yeah. gonna be alright. Yeah, I'll be alright. Still, uh, I'll still be able to make it through life, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, are you yeah. are you fucking ripping up at Call of Duty or what? Like, is that, I'm getting is that better. Shit? I'm getting better. Like I was playing Madden a lot, but now I'm starting to play Call of Duty. It's like all right, like because normally I buy Call of Duty and. Everyone's on like level forty, level fifty. I'm like, man, fuck this. I'm done. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, yeah, like yeah. I get hit with one shot kills. Like it's no fun for me. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to put in that much work as me being terrible. But it's like now I'm just getting getting over like being bad. Yeah. So I'm starting to get like decent now. So it's like all right. Like once I leave here, I'm gonna go back and start playing. So much of that shit's like learning the maps, eh? Yeah. Uh, like you just gotta you be gotta learn the fun. maps. Yeah. You That's gotta, what's crazy. Yeah. Learn the maps. Learn where everyone likes to camp out at the hot spots. It's, yeah, once you get that down, you'll be alright. Did you did you always play video games? Yeah, always. Yeah, okay. always. Um, yeah, I'm a gamer. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's always. like always. It's so big in the states. Yeah, we didn't like. I didn't have. I didn't. I've never even owned a PlayStation. Are you serious? Yeah, for real. So you're like a weirdo for that one. Yeah. Like I feel like that's not normal. Yeah, huh? that's not normal. Like everyone back home. Like like that's like all we talked about. Like I was. There would not be one person in this building. That owns a PlayStation. Wow! And my brother doesn't own like I don't That's know crazy. any I don't know anyone that game. Like, I guess like when like, you get, when you get older, it's like 
once you get older, it's like, all right, like you got other stuff. Like for me, it's like I got like the freedom to still be able yeah, to do that stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, like like most of my day is in the morning time. So when I come home, it's like figure out what I want to do. So like for me, like like I really, I really, really got big on it again two like two years ago. Well, when I was in Italy with my homeboy, we was playing Call of Duty to like three in the morning, and it just went crazy. But like being alone, it's like like what yeah. else am I gonna do? Like I'm not gonna just go out and do a bunch of different stuff like when I just got done practicing for three, four hours like I just want to yeah. relax and the best way I can relax is sitting back and get on the sticks you know what I'm saying so yeah. I mean but like 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 Quincy and Jane they want me to do the, the live streaming so I picked it up more Yeah, like I, did, I didn't not play that much I probably get like one game of Madden and two games of Madden in and call it a day but now that they want me to do the streaming thing it's like alright like and I gotta pick it because I gotta be good. Yeah, you want to be good enough. I gotta be it. good. Yeah, like yeah. you know, what I'm saying I can't be online <laughs> getting trashed by some ten yeah. year old kid. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> that's fucking. Yeah, it's like they're ruthless in my fucking. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm not trying to hear some ten year old kid talking shit to me online. Yeah, I love like because like, 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 my when I lived <laughs> when I lived in the states, my my housemate he's a big gamer. Yeah. So like my business partner. Mm-hmm. So I I did have a brief stint where I would play Call of Duty yeah we did like a, a year of like I actually would play yeah and man I used to just love like you'd put the headphones on yeah. and you'd hear yeah. some little 10 year old be like I fucked your shit up you're right. motherfucker right. and I'm, I'm like, like dude, dude I was, where's your mom at I was like, strangling you <laughs> right, bro right. or the best is when you do hear the mom come in and yeah. be like you gotta turn it off right. and then he's like fuck mom <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's, it's kid, so good man. yeah this is crazy uh, yeah. it, it's cool that you like you start to think about that shit though of like the streaming and yeah. stuff like that I mean if, if it's something I like doing why not make money doing it you know yeah. what I'm saying like like I'm not gonna play basketball forever and I I can't see myself working in the office for somebody yeah like I would go crazy I would curse whoever out like you're not about to tell me I gotta have this paper turned in by you know especially what I'm like you so you like you would have made some decent money like especially in the NBA days and stuff yeah, like yeah. that like so, you like, don't want to just go making 40 grand a year but you gotta nah. work you gotta work 8 fucking hours a day for yeah, that shit yeah nah I'm good like I, I pass on all that yeah like, I, like I'm with I can do the, the stream and I'm with like whatever it can I can have my money making my money for me yeah stuff like that and stuff that what else I, are you looking at like I like um I want to get into like real estate soon. Yeah. So it's big in America, like flipping houses, renting yeah. out property, buying properties, stuff like that. What um, would you do that shit here? I I don't think the market's for it here in Australia. Yeah, like, but your dollar could go so far. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it it all depends. Like where I end up at, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like I feel like I'm gonna be home anyway. So it's like, like that's where I want to put my time and energy. Yeah. Get the kids there. Yeah. But if like. I, if I don't know if I somehow have a connection out here and I can get it started out here, too, why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, if I can, like, the goal is just just build and build and build, and yeah. keep building. So when I'm when I'm gone, the kids have an empire. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's that's the goal. So, like, I wasn't left with anything. My like my parents aren't dead or anything like that. But it's like, yeah. like I wasn't like I didn't have anything when when it was time to be an adult. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to work yeah. for it. So, it's like, I don't want that same thing. I want my kids to be able to, like, n- still have to work. You know what I mean? Know the concept. It's weird, though. Like, yeah. because I, I, like, I'm from not a very wealthy family. Like, yeah. you know, my life as an adult has been, like, me grinding. And yeah. Like, I think it's, like, weird to have a safety net in a way. Yeah. 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 But it's, like, it's, like, the adult thing to you do. You wanted to Even, have it, Yeah. Though, you know right? what I'm saying? Like, it's, like. Like I got, I gotta have. They gotta have something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. All my work can't go for nothing. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I'm, I'm enjoying it, but it's like, like I feel like I failed them as a parent if I'm not leaving them with something. You know what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, like I want them to be able to, like I, I didn't get my first car until I signed my NBA contract. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying. It's like I don't want them to have to. Did you ball out. I got, I got a nice car. What'd you get? I got an Audi S7. Okay. Pretty good. It was yeah, new, brand new. Brand, the S7 is yeah, nice. It was brand new at the time. I think uh, that's actually one of the best looking Audis is the S7. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> I, I knew what I was doing when I did it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, nah, but um, yeah, like I, I don't want them to have to worry about like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I want them to have a car like in high school or if they're responsible for it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like have a car, being able to go places or not have to be stuck you know what I mean like not have to worry about losing out on experiences that their friends get to do because they just we like I just didn't have yeah. the funds or like, you know what I'm saying like like my mom's 
worked her ass off my whole life like you know what I'm saying but it's like like I have friends that were able to go travel and go to like to like Dominican Republic or yeah go to different places and stuff like that that I didn't have the luxury of doing you know what I'm saying but and I don't want the kids to have that I want them to like they're already getting it like they get to yeah. travel like my oldest might have been to Disney World like four times already like you know what I'm saying like but like how much of that like you not getting to go to the Dominican Republic and you not having a car in yeah. high school like how much of that shit made you be a fucking the yeah, boss that you yeah that's now? the thing so like I, I have uh, that's the fucking yeah so it's like it's, it's gotta be a balance they gotta understand like like what I got I worked for you mm. know what I'm saying nothing was given like yeah I'm gonna make sure y'all good but at the same time y'all still gotta fucking work for shit like it's yeah. not like I'm not about to set y'all up so where you don't gotta you can sit on the couch all day yeah. like, I'm gonna set you up to give you a, a head start yeah like just give you like a little like a head start you like know what i'm saying what you yeah will. yeah just a head start so we're like like if y'all don't get a scholarship to college like you have money to go yeah. to college you know what i'm saying or if, if you need a car you have money for a car you know stuff like that like i'm not about to set y'all up to where you can just sit sit back and yeah do nothing with your life you know what i'm saying like a i don't got it like that and b it's not yeah. i'm not doing you no justice you know yeah. what i'm saying so so I mean, I like the goal is just to make sure they have the necessities, yeah, and then have a little of a luxury as well. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I mean, which, which is fair, which is okay. Like you're yeah. allowed to to make sure your kids have stuff you didn't as yeah. a child. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So yeah, that's it's the just goal. like a it's just like a hard balance. Huh? Yeah, it's just you just got to find a balance. Like yeah. like for me, like it's it's like I got to tell them no sometimes. Like they they think they can get whatever they want whenever they want. Yeah, like both of them are spoiled and they both know it. From like their mom for, and for me as well, but um like like I gotta tell them no sometimes. Like my oldest, she's like, "Dad, can I buy this game?" No, you're not gonna play it. Like my youngest, can I get this toy? No, you're gonna stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like, That's so natural for kids though. It's very natural yeah. for kids, but they know I can just go and just do it. Like yeah. for me, like for me growing up, like I had to ask my mom. And it's like nah, and it, she wasn't telling me no because she didn't want to. She was telling me no because she couldn't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Or and, and like the stuff that I really really wanted like I wanted like an Xbox and she found a way for me to get like an Xbox like stuff that I really really want she knew but it's like the little stuff I just wanted just to have like she's like yeah, ah like, I, ain't about, I ain't about to waste no money on you know what I'm saying like but it like for me like my kids know like I can go waste money on something yeah know, that they won't they even care see you waste yeah money it's like you know, yeah but, but yeah. shit it's mine you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah. So, but like, like that's that that's like the balance where I gotta figure out like what what is that something that they really really want? Yeah, and it's okay for them to have like if all their friends have like my son oldest he has a PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Like all his friends have a PlayStation. Like you're, okay, you're gonna have a PlayStation. Like I'm not just about to leave you out here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like playing that playing that Sega. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I ain't gonna leave. He he has no idea what Sega is by the way. But it's <laughs> like like I ain't gonna leave you out here like that. So, but it's like. Like you want the new game, all right, cool. Like you get yeah. a new game, but when it comes down to like he he wants like a pair of Yeezys and stuff like that, I'm like, no, you know what I mean? Like you're not yeah, like you don't need Yeezys. you're not getting no Yeezys. Like you can get the fake Yeezys. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like you, like your your foot grows. Like he's ten years old. He's eleven years old. He wears a size ten. How tall is he at eleven? Is he a tall kid? Yeah, like, he's tall. Yeah. yeah, I mean he's growing nonstop. Like every time I come home, it's like shit. Like. <laughs> Like yo, you gotta slow down. Like his mom called me. Like, oh, we gotta get this. I'm like, I just bought him. And, like he grew out of it. I'm like, yeah. So that that's where like the luxury goes. Like for me, like I had older brothers, so it's like I was able to like run yeah. run their closets. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So for them, like it's like all right, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta re up for them. You know what I mean? Like they're six years apart, so it's a big gap. So it's, yeah, like, true. Huh? Then they're not. They, he, my youngest not the age where he can wear his oldest brother stuff yet. Yeah, you know what I'm that'd be a pretty big gap. Yeah, and I don't even think he wants to. Like he's like, are they close? Yeah, they're super close. Yeah, they they play Fortnite together. Like That's my, sick. yeah, my youngest has the iPad, and my my oldest has the PlayStation. And they play. Oh, like I was just playing with Zayden on with Fortnite. You got to play. I'm like, I can't right now, but yeah, they love Fortnite. They play together all the time. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean they're close. It's cool. Yeah, that is cool. That, huh? Like it makes me happy. Like I don't, like I don't need to be home for them to get the meet up and get together. Like yeah, the moms they're they're cool enough to to orchestrate that on their own and stuff like that. So I got a pretty good setup. Like, yeah, I'm lucky with that. With that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you think much about like what it would be like to grow up in America now for like your kids versus what it was like to grow up like for yourself? Say it again. Do you feel like, do you ever think about what it would be like to be a kid in America nowadays, uh, growing up compared to like when you were growing up? Um, 
because like i feel like it's just even in the last like you know the time that i was there it's like america's just changed so yeah. much yeah um i feel like now you have to worry about a little bit more um with 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 children uh just because like everyone has a cell phone everyone has access to the internet so it's like you got a lot of creeps in america you know yeah. what i mean like it's like like my mom was able to like i'm like nine to eight years old being able to run around my neighborhood by myself yeah. and not to worry about anything like nowadays i feel like like there's so many creeps it's like do i really want my like i still feel some type of way about my 11 year old roaming the neighborhood mm. you know what i'm saying it's like like i know i was doing it at this age but it's like there's so much it's like, different yes yeah, eh? like kids have access to way much like way more so it's like do i trust other kids to to have the same mindset or not get my son into shit that he wouldn't normally be into you know yeah. what I'm saying like like it's like just because like the access is different you know yeah. like I didn't have access to like the internet wasn't even like the internet came around what 96 something like that yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying like and then like you wasn't able but it's to, not even like dude it's an iPhone since y- the yeah, iPhone yeah so I'm really, saying like, yeah the iPhone 2000s that's, that's like you know what I'm saying changed. it's like you couldn't even like I, like I had like the Nokia brick phone like yeah. that was that like my mom that I had one person that called me my mom like my son has an iPhone now, and he has friends list, he has Snapchat, Instagram, and it's like, damn, like, like I want you to have your privacy, I want you to live your life, but shit, let me see that real quick, see what's yeah. going on, and you know what I'm saying, like, it's like, so it's it's the access is way different. So yeah. growing up, it's probably more fun, like being like being a kid, but it's like scarier for a parent yeah. nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy though. Well, it's funny though. You think like the whole, like it would be more fun, for yeah. sure, more fun. Yeah. But it's like, shit would be boring to them. Like shit that was like yeah. exciting to me would be so fucking yeah. boring yeah. to your kids. Yeah. So it's like the level is just constantly. It's, it's like you're up in yeah. the level so much to where it's like, where what are these kids gonna do in a few years? Yeah. When it's like they've done fucking everything. Yeah. So yeah, like I like. I feel like going outside for kids is like foreign like yeah. nowadays because they have like their Fortnite. I got to literally kick my son. I got to drag him out the house. Like, come on, we're going to the park. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, come on, you're going to go do this. Like, I got to drag him out like his bedroom because all he wants to do is play Fortnite all day. Like, it freaking drives me crazy. I'm like, get off the game. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, at the same time, it's like keeps him in the house. Yeah, you know, keep, like I know where he's at. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that that it's like you got to find a balance, like with everything, like like with your children, like you got to find a balance where they're inside, outside, and who they're with. You know what I'm saying? Like he has like a, a group of friends that their parents are like my friends. So it's yeah, like I, like I know like yeah, like some of their kids may be knuckleheads, but I know their their parents have the right minds. I yeah, know, I know they're not gonna have. They're not just gonna let their kids out there roaming, and my son's just gonna be out there roaming, and no one knows where the hell they're at. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like it's 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 tricky being a parent, but it's like it's fun at the same time, but it's scary as hell at the same time too. Yeah, so, yeah. It'd be cool to be in your position and be like such a role model too. Yeah. Like, like you know, if your dad's a professional basketball yeah. player, is playing the NBA and yeah. plays all over the world, like that's gonna be pretty cool for your yeah, kids yeah they love it um, I know they're both excited about coming out here I know they're telling all their friends have they been like, out here before nah so last season um, since I, I signed a little later in the season um, like they already had like their Christmas plans and stuff like that and I didn't want to interrupt it but once I came back I'm like listen like y'all coming out here like like I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them all over the place in the 10 days I'm gonna bring them down here bring them to the Australian Zoo yeah cool and like th- like they're excited I'm excited like like they're gonna for once not have a cold Christmas yeah we're gonna be at the beach on Christmas day you know what I'm saying so yeah. it's gonna be different like but that's like experiences and yeah. stuff that I didn't get growing up and I just wanna make sure they have all that and soak all that in yeah and, underst- yeah. and understand like that they're like they're living a different lifestyle than the average child you know what I'm saying so it'd be cool for them to like meet kids that don't talk like them yeah and, yeah like, all that kind of shit yeah. for the first time yeah too. for sure yeah it's definitely no it's not the like so my oldest, he hasn't really been out that much, um, cause getting like a passport for him was like been a difficulty, like a little struggle for us. But we're getting situated now. My youngest though, he's been everywhere. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's been in Italy. He's been to China. Lived with me in Turkey. Um, so he he has like that 
like that experience a little yeah. bit. Um, he's he's younger though, so I don't like that if he really remembers it or not. Yeah. I don't, like he he probably remembers going to China. Um, that was just last year. He remember, and then after China, like him and his mom went to Bali and stuff like that. So he he remembers that. Um, so like. It's just my oldest. My oldest, he's been pretty much everywhere in America. He's been to Cali. He's been to Vegas. He's been to Puerto Rico. He's been to Florida a bunch of times. So, yeah. so like, but getting him out the country is like that's like the next step for him. And yeah, he's he's gonna soak it all up. He's gonna he's gonna love it. Yeah, like, he because he knows what a cold winter is. He knows what he knows. He's gonna know. He, and hearing different accents and stuff like that is gonna really trip him out. It's yeah. gonna be fun though. He's gonna like it. Do you ever get like tired of all the travel and all like being in different places? Like, is it something that you like you enjoy doing, or you've like learned to enjoy it? Or because it seems like it'd be a bit of a fuck around, like last yeah. year in China, then here yeah. and there. Like, yeah, nah, it's um, it's something you just learn to just deal with. Yeah, but do I enjoy it? Not really. Like, I don't really have like I can't say I'm like I have stability. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because like I really don't like. Once this season's over, I have no clue what I'm gonna do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like I can go home or I can go to Europe. I can go to China. Go, like I have no clue. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like anything can happen. So it's like, it's like that aspect of it is like a little like, like up in the air because like you don't know. But yeah, I mean like 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 I said, you always try to find a positive in it. Like, like at least I'm healthy. At least I can go somewhere. At least I can go make some more money. You know what I'm yeah. saying. So it's like trying to find the positives and. And anything that anything that life pretty much throws at you, so yeah, yeah, like it just I could just see like how it could just grind you down if you let it. Yeah, no, I definitely can. Like traveling alone and stuff, like that's why the first place I bought a dog in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. why that's the reason why I bought a that dog. Was the same for me because I was like I was alone. It's like all right, like like I feel like when I come home I have no resp- I'm used to coming home to my kids like I have no responsibility so it's like yeah like getting my dogs like alright cool like it wasn't a replacement but it was a good alternative like alright like I can do this we can go to the park and they just pretty much get me out the house from outside of just basketball you know what yeah. I'm saying so I mean but now it's like now it's like damn like alright I can't bring him here but like I like it here so it's like alright yeah. you know what I mean so it's like I, I told my teammate that I said, man, I'm about to go buy another dog. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but it's like, damn, like I'm gonna buy a dog and I have to leave him here because. Well, no, nah, you could take him to America a lot yeah. easier. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, They're but like, if I if I come back now, Scott, yeah. now now my now, mom, two dogs. now my mom has to watch two dogs and she's gonna <laughs> go crazy. Like she's gonna go. She like she loves my she loves my dog. His name's Kobe, by the way. That's it. Yeah, she loves him, but. She she always come like your dog driving me crazy. I'm like all right, all right, my call, like call one of my homeboys, come pick him up real quick for the weekend or something like that. So yeah, that's cool. That's fucking funny. Yeah, dude. dogs are like kids, dude. Man, and French bulldogs. I don't know if you know much about them. They're stubborn as hell. Yeah, attitude plus. Yeah. Oh my goodness, like the f- most friendliest dog, but stubborn. Like they they know you're telling them not to do something, and they're still like. I'm gonna do whatever you know what I'm saying like yeah yeah it's crazy what made you get one of them a Frenchie um, you just think they look cool yeah I love them yeah I love like they're like they're they're cute ugly yeah you know what I mean like got their little squishy nose and like like I said they're so friendly and and they're small and not big yeah so like being able to travel with them was easy and stuff like that if I'm not coming to Australia apparently that's but you know what I mean fuck. but that's still such a trip dude I man, can't believe yeah, that yeah it's shit. crazy but I mean yeah, like I just like I seen a bunch of like my friends had them I'm like yeah you know I want a Frenchie yeah and then I just found one and it was way cheaper in Italy than it would be to get him back home yeah and yeah so it was cool dude I got a friend that breeds them here yeah and uh like they make so much fucking money off yeah these things. yeah they're like crazy expensive yeah and I, I don't know what they are what they sell for out here but like i know back home like i was looking at them because i was when i was looking to buy one i was looking like that six thousand seven thousand like it's a lot of money then i go to italy get one for 1500 it's like yeah it's like a complete different like that's still expensive for a lot of people but it's like compared comparatively com- speaking and, yeah, yeah and compared to what I would have paid back home for one it's like I feel like I came up you know what I mean so <laughs> you stop bringing in more of those motherfuckers yeah like, like he still has his nuts and all that so I'm, I'm gonna breed him eventually yeah okay. yeah so make some money off of him but sell his little kids out there <laughs> yeah Whereabouts in the states do you want to live full time when you like when you do? See, go I back? don't know. Like, I I think like, I like Atlanta a lot. Um, Dude, Atlanta's I, fucking rad. Yeah, I like Atlanta a lot, and I like L.A. Yeah. 
So I, I, I don't like I really don't know. Like it's hard to, to tell. What's your positives and negatives? The negatives the LA is like traffic. Is traffic expensive. Yeah. Um crazy expensive. And, it, and it's like far away from the family. Yeah. Atlanta, um, just like it's it's Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm used to it. I know what to expect from there. You can spend you can get a more bang for your buck. Yeah, in crazy property there. Um but like like I said, it's away from family. Um, but I, I don't see myself living full time in my city. Like I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, and it's all gonna depend on who I end up like being with. Like yeah. who I end up finding. Like if I find a wife or something like that, and whoever. Like obviously their their preference is gonna come into come into play and stuff like that. So yeah, I think when it's time to settle down, then we'll figure it out then. Yeah, Atlanta is a pretty dope city. Like yeah. that's one of the cities that i've spent the most time in that i haven't actually lived in yeah like i well i mean i sort of half did live there like my old business partner lived in atlanta yeah and like he's from uh lawrenceville okay so which is like an hour out of yeah. atlanta yeah so like we used to hang out there quite a bit but yeah. the more like in atlanta's changing too yeah like crazy with all like the movies and the yeah. the tv stuff that they're shooting got, like, there tyler perry got his own studio i think there now really yeah it's crazy and it's like i think it's like the big i think it's bigger than all the other studios yeah it's, like, it's bigger than like universal and yeah they're putting in like so much because of all like the tax incentives and stuff like that because yeah, yeah. hollywood was is just like crazy well california is crazy taxes in general yeah, huh? yeah it's crazy yeah it's like one of the most highest tax states mm. yeah, yeah. Cal i think it's like california and new york yeah new york yeah but yeah it's it's crazy you can see like how that shit affects like the culture of a city yeah and how it starts to like it's like and then atlanta's black capital of the world you know yeah. what i'm saying like it's like where all like the black people live at you yeah know what i'm saying so it makes you feel like like when i was there like i loved it like i never been around so many black people in my life yeah and i just soaked it up yeah you know what i'm saying so it's like it's good to see like your own kind doing well for themselves it's like yeah. it inspires you to just be better so that that's like a major positive about Atlanta. Yeah. And obviously like it's not just that, but Atlanta has so much more to offer. But it's like for me it's like being around your own and being able to see success and yeah, like, you know what I mean, and see how it's being bred there. Like so it's it's great. Dude, the th yeah. the crazy thing with me with America is like you hear so much stuff with between like black and white, but yeah, like yeah. black culture is so fucking celebrated. Yeah. Like like to me black culture is culture yeah. in america yeah. like and the dude i've got so many black friends over there and i just yeah. i literally would be like like we just aren't as fucking cool as you <laughs> like you know you, you see like in the you get like a, a group of people especially like a team environment yeah and it's like you, you can watch like hard knocks you can watch yeah it's like the black dudes are always singing yeah and like it's like it's, there's always a vibe and yeah. like black culture is no, we know so how to vibrant. have fun yeah it's that, fucking, yeah, we know how to have fun yeah for sure that, i it's mean it's so different though right but i feel like that comes from just like our upbringing you know what i'm saying mm. like we gotta make make it make something your own fun. yeah you gotta like growing up like you had to sort of make your own fun like it's yeah. not not saying that every black person grew up poor or every black person was like oppressed or something you know what yeah. i'm saying but it's like, like well, but there is something to it yeah it's like just having that like like we have brothers like a bunch of brothers and sisters and it's like all right well we're not doing like a bunch of after school activities or something like that so it's like we got to figure out how we're going to have fun yeah within what what we're given you know what i'm saying yeah. and rather than just like complaining about it or like you know like like obviously get like the the group that gets get caught up in the dumb stuff and but yeah. at, it all starts with having fun yeah at first you know what i'm saying like like when you get a bunch of kids that are knuckleheads it starts with them just having fun and it just leads into yeah doing dumb shit yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying so yeah. but it's like we like when you have the group that can just like like everyone I feel like I've, I've been through stuff where I've had like knucklehead moments where I got caught up in doing some dumb shit that just luckily for me it didn't like detour my yeah. life you know what I'm saying and so like like I feel like everyone just it's just has like something they can relate to like oh like yeah. back in like you know what I'm saying like like and we just have fun with it and yeah. like growing up we like you always hear like like 
when your mom's cleaning or something like you have like the old school classic songs on it's like you start singing and then you hear one of your homeboys start singing it's like oh shit like I remember this from back in the day like let's all just start singing yeah. you know what I'm saying so but why people don't do that I, I, I don't know like I don't yeah, I it's don't, crazy to me like I, it I don't was, I don't I don't I never really been around like like I have a, a lot of white friends and stuff like that and like I just never like been around like their upbringing and like their yeah. household so I don't I don't understand oh, why it's, it's like that it's but, different I, yeah, I, like, I don't either like yeah. I've just I wish I wish I knew and it's always fascinated me yeah. and it was like it was one of the reasons I loved being in America yeah. you just see like a group of fucking people and they didn't have to know each other. They didn't have to like. If you were black, yeah, you were fucking family. Yeah, to, and yeah, it, and, that, and that's. It, it, I, I think it, it. I think it just goes a lot to how pretty much we got to America. Yeah, and it makes all sense. the slavery and everything black people had to do just to be recognized as a human being. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like we all have that as our common denominator. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So yeah. like like. Yeah, we didn't live through that. Yeah, our parents didn't live through that. But it's a part of the culture. But it's a part of the culture. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like we all know like like that's why we can be like, Hey, what's up, nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, like and and then as soon as a white person says it's like Yeah, like what the fuck? Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? It's it's just something that we just have that like it's like we all understand and yeah. know each other, even though we didn't live the same life, I feel like we all understand yeah the story. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Understand like each other's background like like being like when I was living in Atlanta it was like like the most friendliest place I've yeah. ever been and it's like wow this is amazing then yeah. it's like I moved to Sacramento it's like damn it's like like I walk into the store people don't even say hi to you yeah. you know what I'm saying like everywhere you go in Atlanta whether you're black white Dude, whatever, I was gonna say it doesn't matter yeah, it don't matter black, it don't matter what you are yeah. it's like everyone's like I think that's just the southern, southern hospitality, southern hospitality. Yeah. it's like hey like you know what I'm saying but but the, obviously the South and all that hospitality comes from like back in the slave day, you exactly, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And all that. So like, it, it's just, it's just weird. Like, like, like I, like you said, like we can get a bunch in a team setting and a group setting and we put a song on it. Just, it just yeah. triggers a memory and yeah. everyone like just sings along with yeah. like, we got like a bunch of family reunions and shit like that. We go to barbecues where you just got the music blasting and everyone yeah. just having a great time. And it just triggers a memory once you hear that song, and everyone just just sings along, I guess, or just yeah, I fucking, understands where this where this where this moment is going. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, it's good. Yeah, I just I always loved it, man, yeah. and I just I love being around like the friends that I had that yeah. were a part of that culture. Yeah. And it just I always wondered, like, because I'm just a, I, that's my thing. Like, I just think about that sort of shit. I yeah. see something happen, doesn't it's with everything, and I'm like, yeah. I wonder why that fucking works the way yeah. that it does. Yeah. And I, I always, I can't, I can't give you the recipe for it. I think you're yeah. right. Like, yeah. it would have to do with like there would be some kind of like white people. Like, yeah. where the fuck do white people come from in America? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you're black in America, like you know where you came from. Yeah. Like, you came from a you came from slavery you yeah. came from that for the most part that's that's what for it was the, for yeah. the most part yeah, for sure exactly what it is and that's just how it like, like yeah like we you know everyone came pretty much all the black people came from the motherland which is Africa and it's like I'd never been to Africa I, I yeah. have a bunch of African friends and stuff like that but it's like even in America you could tell the difference yeah like you could see like oh this is like an African yes you know what I'm saying 100%. you have a black person like yeah but it's like I feel like nowadays everyone like I feel like growing up it was oh he's African and like nowadays it's more it's one big ass community like you know what I'm yeah. saying like, I feel like everyone's like we're like as a whole I feel like black people are embracing each other more so now yeah I think it has a lot to do with social media and just like you know like black people weren't in like all the big time movies and stuff like yeah growing, like you had your black movies like you have like your Friday and stuff like that but that's yeah. like like that's like the pioneers of like Ice Cube and and like the black dude was yeah. always like that have like the, a black dude role. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah but and now that, it's and that's like, growing up. You know what I'm saying. But now it's like like but like, that but that's because I feel like like we're changing the narratives about ourselves. You yeah. know what I'm saying. So it's like 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 I said, you got Tyler Perry who has his own studio, and you know he's he's casting all black people. T.I. You know what I'm what saying. Yeah, you got T.I. You got Ice Cube. You got. Yeah so many different guys who Dre is a yeah, billionaire yeah Dr. Dre is just changing the narrative you got like Jay-Z who's putting his influence on the NFL and then you got the NBA who pretty much is 
the black culture yeah. almost at this point. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's like at the same time, it's like it's not to the it's not to where we're excluding it. It's like we're we're just trying to take over to where it's like and then like everyone's embraced. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And like I feel like America is probably like the, the only. I guess we're probably like the most diverse country. Yeah, you like, definitely I, I, one outside of like London or something like that. But like, I feel like we're like the most diverse country. So it's like we got so much to to like integrate and try to yeah. mesh and blend, and like we got so much negative and you got so many positives. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So it's like I feel like. Social media helps along with that, obviously. Yeah, like just, just to make the world smaller. Yeah, make the world a lot smaller, and you can see what's going on, and it puts a lot of pressure on bad shit as well. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, like, if you got some negative stuff going on, you just publicly put it out there, and it's like, oh, like, well, can't be like that no yeah. more. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I feel like it helps out a lot. I would definitely say, like, because I so where I grew up to yeah. give context to it was I grew up in the black community basically yeah, yeah. so I grew up in Cairns North Queensland yeah like all my whole football team I mm -hmm. played on I was the only white kid like yeah. that's what that's what we did mm -hmm. so to me it's always been something that I paid attention to yeah because like I've got friends where they're like they might just not really know any aboriginals yeah like they grew up in Sydney it's yeah. like they just they're not around it yeah so they're not aware of the You're different definitely dynamics a product that of your exist. Environment. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And yeah. it's like you I don't I, I don't think you could ever blame somebody as well for like if they're ignorant to certain facts be, yeah. just because they're not exposed to it. Yeah, like, nah, yeah. I, I think that's like a, another issue that people always gotta understand everyone's story. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just just as if if I may seem unknown to you, like you may, like I, I gotta understand that you're unknown. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's all about your background. It's yeah. not. It's not your fault. You were born here. It's not your exactly, fault. Yeah. You were raised this way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like I feel like once you get to like being an adult, if you want to be ignorant to certain aspects and stuff, like that, that's the personal choice. Exactly. Once yeah. you get older, but as a child, like. Like, like growing up, like, like I feel like children don't know racism. No, you know what I'm saying? That's no. like taught. That's instilled into. But I think that to to that though, um, children definitely don't know racism. Yeah. But they know you look different. Yeah. They, and they know I look like I would yeah. look different to you as yeah, a kid. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, I think that like one of the things that I like, I'm so fucking down with the way that culture's moving towards like racism won't exist at some point. Yeah. But I also am worried that. Oh, we got Donald Trump as a president. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little I, different in America. I feel like it's it, going to exist forever. You know what I mean? I think. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I, I think yeah. it. I think it'll go away at some point. I, I, it has I hope, to. Uh, we'll see. It'll we just be like, nice. I probably won't be while I'm alive. No, nah, it won't be while. <laughs> you know what alive, I'm saying? No. But I mean, it's uh, it's gotten better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, well, as a child, you don't really realize yeah. what you know. What I'm saying what it like, even is. Yeah, what it is. What it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. like my, like growing up my best friend he was white you know what I'm saying like and it was like that was, like he was my best friend like we went to daycare together and my mom used to drop me off at his house he used to come to my place and we used to just yeah. just kick it like yeah. you know what I mean like that was your boy that was my boy you yeah. know what I'm saying um and it's like you don't really like 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 for kids like they don't know like they don't like they they know you're different but they don't know like but it's not a negative yeah it's not a negative yeah. to them like you see like a bunch of like if you take if you go to a daycare you'll see kids playing with everyone if you go to the, yeah now if you go to a high school in in a certain county and then you have someone else who is outside of that like either if you're in an all black or all white neighborhood yeah. or something like that then it's like alright well you kind of stand out and yeah like obviously like you're gonna be embraced by some people, but you're not gonna be embraced by everyone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you go to like a little kid daycare, you're embraced by everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's like kids don't know that stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I just think that, like, I love the conversation. I love the way that everything's moving. Yeah. And, but I just, like, I get worried sometimes that people want to make us all the same. It's yeah. like, we're not the same. No, definitely. Like, not. we're super different. Black yeah. culture is super different. Yeah, I want not. it to stay different. Yeah, for sure. I want all of the good parts of all of the cultures yeah. to stay super different. Yeah, like absolutely. I think sometimes I think there's too much of a push towards like, no, we're all equal. Yeah. We all should have equal rights, equal rights, and equal opportunities. Yeah. But like, I want you to be super yeah. different to me. And that's what I want makes, you to like different food. Yeah. I want you because yeah, then when sure. we become homies, you, you can show fuck, me something exactly. different. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think that that's like, to me, I'm like, that's the conversation that I, I hope. Yeah. Like this whole, like, we're all the same. We're not the fucking same. Man. <laughs> nah. Like, when I like yeah. if I was around you and like 
10 of your black friends like I'm yeah. gonna be the fucking odd one out yeah. of that but that's cool but we will embrace you though exactly. you know what I'm saying like, like it's it, cool you know what I mean we're gonna embrace you like yeah so yeah I mean it, I feel like America is just funky in that aspect like yeah. it's, it's all about like where you're at as well like I, like I know there's some places like I like just wouldn't feel as comfortable at and then I go to another place and, and it doesn't even have to be like like a black neighborhood or just a white neighborhood like, like there's certain white neighborhoods where you, I'll just feel more comfortable than yeah you know what I mean and I, and I think it's just all about the upbringing you know what I'm saying yeah. so it's it's like racism is it's something that's gonna be needs to be talked about all the time um I mean yeah so it, it's just crazy though like you have a lot of like some weird stuff going on you got like cops shooting yeah and I feel like that's more their upbringing too because of the fact that they don't really know the black culture it's like it's like they're automatically like afraid, afraid yeah you know what I'm saying so it it, it starts but you like, think like uh, with you say you're like a, a white cop like yeah. genetically like you're not like a big fucking super gnarly dude like yeah. I could see how black neighborhoods would just be intimidating yeah. to, be, to be around like, and that's, I, and that's you because you don't it, know yeah, exactly you know what I'm saying yeah. like if, if you were if you were, like took the time to like maybe before there is an incident yeah. go to this neighborhood and try to connect with the people or something like yeah. that then then it'll be like okay well you can understand cause it's all just education yeah you can yeah. understand a black person's aggression you know what I'm saying or like or if they're not being aggressive, or you know, I mean, you can understand yeah. them a little bit better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, I feel like if it's not like if you're not really educated, like you yeah. said, on it, like the first thing you're gonna think is the unknown is scary. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So whether it don't matter whether you're black, white, or anything, if yeah. you're into a situation that you're not, you don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. The first thing to do is to be afraid, unless you're like a damn superhero or something. There is definitely like, there is for sure an issue with that. Yeah. shit like with the the whole police brutality thing yeah, and like sure. it's definitely but it's like it's gotta even be just deeper than that like with just who are the people that are being cops like not that many people want to be cops yeah and then it's like the people that do want to be cops like how many of them are doing it because they want to have service the community yeah. and how many are doing it because they want a badge and a gun yeah and it's so like uh, it's, a, it's, it's a mixture so, of both yeah, yeah it's, it's so a mixture of both huh? like you have like I, I know I have like um like like my encounters with like police or anyone like uh authority figure like some people like get off on having an an uh, an authority figure yeah. you know what I'm saying and then you have the genuine people who really want to make a difference yeah and I think instantly you can tell like who is who yeah and like I, like obviously like people change obviously like something like experience can change you obviously if you have a bad experience here it can shift the way you yeah and then you're gonna carry that mentality yeah. into every dealing yeah. which could in, interface with yeah, yeah. Well, yeah obviously that can be it but you can tell like you like there's times where I've been like like not even like just in like my issues like alone or just being like an outsider looking in like damn like this cop is like a dick yeah. you know what I'm saying like for what like why is this cop being a dick right now yeah. you know what I'm saying it's like like there's no need for this it's, it's like no one's being hostile towards him like yeah. why it's, and I think those are the cops that are just oh well I got the gun I got the badge that's right like I'm like I'm the shit you know what I'm yeah. saying and where I feel like being a police officer shouldn't be about enforcing your authority it should be about protecting and serving that's what's on your badge yeah is keeping people safe and you know what I'm saying like so like I feel like so being outside the country like like um cause the police vibe's so different here right yeah it's way different like like you barely I, I don't see guns like I haven't you know what I mean like obviously the police here carry them but it's like like I feel like their first thing isn't like when I'm watching videos of people getting in trouble their first thing isn't to reach for their gun yeah like in America their first thing is to reach for a gun and you hear a lot of stories about people oh I shot him I thought it was my taser how the fuck do you think it's your taser like, <laughs> you, you, there's probably at least a 10 pound difference you know what I'm saying say, like, like yeah. you know what I mean but so like uh, that, that's like like I had like I, if I was in America I'd get pulled over or something like the first thing the cop was doing just have yeah. his hand on his gun yeah. I'm like damn like why is this the first thing you got your hand on I just you run know? a red light bro you like, know what I mean like I, can I run a red light and just yeah. get a ticket like anyone else Yeah. but like that, I think it's just like the fear aspect you know yeah. what I mean like obviously you have knuckleheads who attack police officers for no reason then you have knucklehead police officers who do yeah. the same shit so I mean it's 
like I, but I think it's, it goes down to like the policing like I feel like policing is it's to catch you doing something and it's exactly. not it's not it's not very preventative yeah like I feel like being outside punishment of, culture yeah that's what it is so yeah. being outside of America like I've seen like 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 I like you rarely see cops on the side of the road like in Australia yeah and that's how it was in Turkey that's how it was in Italy like you rarely see it yeah you know what I mean and then um in America like like you know like there's gonna be cops on the side of the road and it's like to catch you speeding yeah rather than like here like they got like the speeding cameras to handle speeding you know what I'm saying like we don't have like I got so many speeding tickets last season because of the speeding cameras yeah you know what I'm saying and yeah it's not very lenient like as far as the rule but it it, but it stops that like it stops negative the, interaction it stops the interactions with the police you know what I'm yeah. saying which can go south at any moment you yeah. know what I'm saying so like are we trying to grow, like, do something to like prevent people from yeah. speeding and causing accidents and stuff, doing like that, or are we just trying to catch them and see what happens after that? You know what I mean? Yeah, so. there's definitely like the thing with America too is it's very um, like America was founded as a conservative country, yeah, for sure, yeah, and it's like the values that America was built on is like hard work yeah. determination you know innovation never given yeah. up like it wasn't built on fun yeah no nah. uh, you know america it's not like come to america and have fun yeah nah. that's not what it that's not what it's yeah. about yeah and it's like i think with that comes like a certain level of like that punishment culture yeah. to where it's like pleasures frowned upon yeah. in yeah. a way yeah, and it's like of, nah bro you gotta yeah. get on your grind you gotta yeah. do this you gotta yeah, do that sure. and i think that that then leads to like a weird policing mentality and yeah. it's like you, I mean dude just to look at the this fuck that we could talk for another three hours and all that sort of yeah, shit but it's like could. but like the the issues of like even the private prisons and yeah. then you've got like you gotta have people film those things or they fucking don't make then like, the private prisons don't make money yeah, yeah. and so, they, they get these freaking construction deals paying their workers one cents per hour shit like yeah. that it's like the prison ref- it's crazy so like this pretty much goes back to how, like, I feel like if black people have attitudes, this is this, this is why, because, yeah. like, for instance, you have, like, say, drugs in America. You have crack, you have cocaine. Same same drug, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, like, crack is more affordable. Cocaine isn't as affordable. Crack is for poor black people. Yeah. Cocaine is for, is for rich, rich white, white people. people. And, but if you get caught with a gram of crack and a gram of cocaine there's more jail time when there's a gram of crack yep. you know what I'm saying so it's like that pe- like people see that and yeah. you know what I mean and that pisses us off like yep. you know what I'm saying that pisses I'll piss anyone off like if you're not treated fairly yeah. you know what I'm saying because like, I, I would say like what I was going to say before with the my whole thing of like when I was growing up or whatever the context of that is like I look for that shit I look yeah. for that because I was a part of that growing yeah. up Yeah, and it's like I'm sensitive to that shit and I try yeah. to pick up on it where I can. Yeah. And in America, on a day-to-day basis with fucking white people interacting with black people, you don't really see racism like yeah. a lot. Or I, I personally yeah. didn't. But what you do see is like that shit yeah. where it's like... The fu- you it's, know, it's certain, not blatant in your face. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's that it's systemic in yeah, a way. You yeah, know, like for there's sure. certain things that are like it's set up to where it's like you're just not gonna fucking win. Yeah, and that and that would feel people, shit. Yeah, and people see that, you know. But like 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 racism, it, it's there. Like there are, there are definitely times where you're treated poorly because you're black. Like there's been guys who pretty much got asked to leave a restaurant because that, yeah, see that's you know what I mean. Just up. because like or because they think they're not going to buy something or something like yeah. that. Like, like there's story, there's stories out there. Like, yeah. there's, oh, but, there you know what I mean? There's stories is. out there, but the stuff that were, like you said, the systematic stuff where it's like, it holds you back. Like, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? So if you got a drug that is penalized more in this community and it's the same drug essentially, then another one, like people see that. And then at the end of the day, it's like, all right, well now you got this community who has, pretty much the black men who are dealing dealing and using this drug and they're doing this time for this drug yeah it 
takes away from them being home for their kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, all now right, you're well. Going out with, go, you've got kids growing up without fathers. Now you got kids growing up without fathers, that male, that positive male figure, and it's like, all right, well, they, they were penalized for trying to provide for their father. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, just it's just a big ass cycle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not, not saying it's an excuse, like I don't, I, I like, yeah, I, you, like, never, no, you never I, went to jail. Yeah, for I never did. Yeah. I never did yeah. any. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like not that's an excuse. And obviously, people are taking an easy road and yeah, and and they're dealings with drugs. But sometimes this is what's left. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what's this and is the crazy it. thing is too, <laughs> like people. That's fucking even down to the thing of like Philly's fucking cold, bro. Yeah, like, and if you haven't made enough money at your job to pay your heating bill. It's like you might be trying to make money exactly. in a regular job it, but it gets cold it gets and you cold. got a fucking baby you, you that gotta, needs to be warm you gotta figure it out like and I get it yeah I, I mean it's it's the system and it's like there's ways around it so it's like nowadays like I think um, like when you have all these big big artists big actors yeah. doing stuff for the community it's given like taken away from that being like yeah. an outlet you yeah. know what I'm saying so it's, it's helping out yeah you know what I mean and for myself I know like once I start doing like the real estate and stuff like that it's gonna be just trying to better the community yeah. rather than take away from the community obviously the goal is to make money yeah you know what I'm saying but at the same time like I don't wanna have to like shit on anyone to, to, to do, do it, it. Yeah. you know what I'm saying so it's like you, you wanna like find, find a balance where like you can help people out at the same time and still take care of yourself and yeah. your family and it's 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 a crazy system it's like growing up in America living in America is tough um it's fun it's probably one of the best countries to be in but yeah at the same time it's like there's a lot of little shit you got to worry about and there's so much disparity between yeah. the people that have and have not yeah for sure absolutely like it's cr- like a crazy big yeah, disparity for sure absolutely um yeah and it's not like 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 I said, I got Donald Trump. But like, it's meant for the rich to get richer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, if you got money, like, like you should be good in America. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And th- that's that's how the system is for it. Like, it's it's hard to go from not having to having, and you got to be really good at something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You got to have a skill. You got to be really good. And then at the same time, you can't no fuck ups in between. Yeah, you you and getting to making that skill. Uh, profitable business yeah. you know what I'm saying cause the moment you mess that up it's over Yeah, you know what I'm saying it's hard to come back from that so I mean it's it's definitely a process but it's like yeah it's crazy yeah. it's crazy and then like you got like so many different stuff you gotta worry about like I know in Australia like I believe taxes pay for health insurance yeah like you got you got single mothers back home who can't afford health insurance you yeah. know like, like because A they can't get a legitimate job or they, and they literally just can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, they yeah, they got kids that yeah, they have to look after. You know what I'm saying? Maybe their fucking black husband's in jail yeah. for fucking just selling just, crack. Just selling crack. Yeah, yeah, like it's 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 just yeah, it's tough. Like it's, yeah, like there's, there's not an answer for it. I think the best we can do is just one person at a time. You just keep like, on keeping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it. Like just try to just try to change it slowly and pro- like there's no answer there's no recipe yeah. for it like it's not um, the only way it's gonna happen is if you take every billionaire and just like, yeah. say hey give us your money and let's spread it out even across which is never gonna happen Yeah, you know what I mean so like it, there's no answer I guess you just gotta keep taking it t- as a daily grind So and the, the beauty of it too is like as fucked up as some of the system is and like it let rich white people win to yeah. start with that's why I said rich gets richer yeah. yeah yeah. but the good thing now is and like I, I, I do th- I do genuinely genuinely believe and it's easy to say as a fucking yeah. white person yeah. but I do think that capitalism isn't racist at all like yeah. if you're rich and black yeah. you can stay rich and black yeah, you know for what sure. I mean. Like, and now that I think that the system is so built on capitalism, there, like that's yeah. America's value. And yeah. now you see guys like Jay Z, yeah. like the trickle down effect. Like, yeah. they can help yeah. the, their community because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like what it was at the start was like you just had all these people that come over, and then yeah. they were just poor white people that were trying to be poor rich people. Yeah. And it's like it created the yeah. system. Yeah. But I think that same system now has the ability. But, you know, like, look at the stuff like what LeBron James has, like yeah. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Insanely fucking rich. Yeah. Yeah. Dude yeah. that's come out of the, that's come out of that community. Like, so now I think that 
you're starting to see like you're right it was so much harder for those dudes to like break out of that system yeah. but now that they have like even what meek mill's doing right now yeah. with like his policy reform and yeah. stuff like that i think that that is what but even, will be the yeah, catalyst even you know? going into like meek mill like what he had to go through Bro, was nonsense like crazy. he was on probation for like his whole life you <laughs> yeah. know what i'm saying like because of something he did when he was young like yep. it's it's bullshit like you know what i'm saying like then like you hear sto- like everything is different like you hear like but it's like when you hear stories about like like some kid like sexually assaulting another child and getting only promote like probation like yeah. you, know, you know that's not a black kid getting that yeah. you know what I mean For like real. you know what I'm saying so it's like when you hear stuff like that and then you gotta hear about how this person sold drugs trying to help their mother pay yeah. the bills and keep the like you said keep the heat on and shit like that and like they're on probation for 11 like yeah. 15 years and the moment they do something thing, wrong yeah. you know Not what I'm saying they're right back in jail yeah. you know what I'm saying so it's, it's it's crazy like it's a system but like I like, like I said there's no one answer for it all yeah. like I think it, we just gotta figure out a way to just keep growing as yeah. a unit like everyone and everyone's on board which isn't gonna happen but it's like like just one day at a time one step at a time Yeah, that's it so it's fucking it's a it's a combo that definitely like has to happen and it's yeah. like a thing and I think it's gonna be a non-stop combo yeah. as well like it yeah. has to be a non-stop combo unless it's, or it's gonna revert back to yeah like you only you're gonna get away like you're, you're only a, like shit only happens to you what you allow you know what I'm saying yeah like, eventually it's like something's gonna have to change like like it, it's a process for us like yeah like going from not having equal rights to having equal rights and yeah. now you're working with women rights and it's like it's like so much so much shit. It's like a slow process. Once yeah. you see, once you get one thing, then you gotta figure out what else isn't right. Then you gotta get that situated, and you figure out what else isn't right. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, I was gonna say, like all yeah. of this is just life in general, right? Yeah. It's like you, everyone starts at a different point. Yeah. And it's like, I guess that's the thing that's fucked. Yeah. Is that we? No one has any control over where they start. Exactly. Like you, you got born a black kid. Yeah. In Philly. Yeah, I got like, born a white kid in Kent. Like, yeah, it's like it's not out of control. Us, like, neither yeah. of us like knew that that's what was gonna happen. Yeah. You don't know any different. Yeah, and it's like, you know, and imagine like being born a black kid in Philly is better than being born a kid with AIDS in yeah, absolutely. Some you know yeah. like some African country. Yeah. Like it's crazy that I think maybe that's like it, almost the perspective that people need to keep to is yeah. like, all right, this is just. It can where, be worse. This is where it's at. Yeah. Like we, it, yeah. It's just a fucking genetic lottery where yeah. you get yeah. where you get picked, and it's like that's what can you do? It's and then that's like the point is like, okay, this is your fucking this starting your journey, point. Yeah. Like, and then it's what's like, your mindset? How you gonna how you gonna make a life out of this? Yeah. And that's why, like I said, like my kids, like they gotta have, like I'm gonna give them a head start, but I'm not gonna just give them everything. I'm not gonna work my whole life just so they can live easy. Like, yeah. Nah, like you're gonna have to do something. Like pick a pick a trade and figure like I'll support the mess out of you in that trade you know what I'm saying you want to yeah. be a basketball player cool we gonna work out every day we gonna yeah. do this we gonna do that I'll make sure you got this but like I'm not you're not just gonna sit back and chill chill you know what I mean life like, will fuck you up yeah for sure facts like I like I have friends who like damn near 30 years old still trying to figure it out you know what I'm saying and I don't want that for my kids like I want them to like even if they are trying to figure it out, I want them to have something to where they have a trade or a skill where they can fall back on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, or it's something, something they can just fall back on. Well, like you got your degree, I got my degree, yeah. so it's like if I if I wanted to, I can either a go back into that and add on to getting like a master's or finding a job. Like having a bachelor's in America nowadays doesn't really yeah. mean anything, but it's better than having a GED right now. You know what I'm saying? So yes. Like, what you going to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, like being just the fact that I went through that, that process going through school, doing what I had to do to make sure it's like, it gave me a different, like knowing that it takes hard work to achieve something. Like I had a goal and I achieved it. Like, yeah. You know I mean, a lot of times people have goals and they don't achieve them. So yeah, like I know how to sit down and grind and achieve a goal. You know what I mean, so like having that, like, that's yeah. almost better than having a GED or yeah, a, like, like having knowing anything. that you can do that shit. Yeah, like that. That's what it is. Like sticking, picking something, and sticking with it, and grinding it out until either a you know it shit ain't working, or b you figure out a way to make it make it make money for you. Pretty much, you know what I'm saying. So 
So what's yeah. next? So you've got how many games left in this season? We're almost the, done three hours, so we're going to wrap oh, this damn, shit up. We're really? going to get some food. Yeah, that's crazy. Jeez. So, yeah, um, games, uh, we only played five five games so far, so we probably have like damn near 30 more games. Like Sick. Yeah, so, so the so season's we, just started. The season just kicked off. So I got time to be a fanboy. Yeah, yeah pull yeah. up. <laughs> Whenever you want, just come on. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I have two seats waiting for you. How many seats you need? Just come on. Bring the whole crew with you. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, I really appreciate you doing this, man. No, this um, was cool. Three hours went by fast. He wasn't lying. Does go quick, huh? Damn, that's crazy. Did I'm, they say that it goes quick? Yeah, I don't think I ever spoke for three hours in my life. What did you think when when the girls said that it was three hours? I was like, shit, like, what the hell am I talk about for three hours? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I had no clue. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then he was like, dang, I didn't really do that much research. I'm like, shit. What are we really going to talk about? But I think it's cool though because like yeah, I, I we just, had a real genuine conversation. Yeah. It was great. Like uh-huh. I like I, I like podcasts now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I like them. That's like it. it's cool. Yeah. Have you ever listened to any of them? No. Oh fuck. Yeah, like I, I might have like had like skimmed over some back home. Like, That's some uh, dope off shit you've missed man, out on. Yeah, bro. I got to. I'm gonna start listening to them now. Shit, I'm. Instead of listening to like music, sometimes gonna have some. I don't podcast. listen to much music, yeah. Except for that new NBA YoungBoy album. Yeah, yeah. You, you like him? Do you like? You didn't listen to that album? I didn't listen to it. I oh, haven't. I haven't really caught on to his. Uh, I never listened to any of his shit, and then I saw um, academics posted. Yeah. About uh, that he was like he was doing pretty well like first week sales. Yeah. So then I listened to it, and the first song I'll play it for you now, but like. I yeah. was like, damn, that's a fucking joint. Yeah, son. yeah, I'm gonna listen to it then. Yeah. Yeah, so but yeah. I don't listen to a lot of music now. It, it's it's like tough for me to get on to like the newer guys. I like listen to Are my, you old school dude? Not old school, but like what's your shit? Like anything Drake put out. Okay. I like Drake, Chris Brown, Jay Z, like that I guess that's old school now. Yeah, kind you know of I, mean? I guess. But, you like Cole? Yeah, J. Cole. But I do like the baby. I like Little Baby. Yeah. I like uh A Boogie with the hoodie. Yes. I like those dudes. I'm into that. Yeah. Um you uh you on Denzel Curry? Nah, I haven't, I haven't listened to him. I don't, know, I don't know who that is. Bruh. Is that, is, like, is that like a real person? Denzel Curry. Is that his real name? Fucking what? I feel like he's like... In I between, don't know if that is his... In between Denzel Washington and Steph Curry. I think that's like, what he's going for. Okay. But dude, you've never heard any of his shit. I don't think I did. I'm about to fucking school you up on your own music, yeah, bro. Pull, yeah, pull it up. <laughs> that's it. Pull it dude, up. Dude, you're missing up on some... Yeah, I, I, some yeah so yeah, I like... Yeah, like when it comes to like the newer guys, it takes a while for me to get put. Yeah, on to yeah, that like, makes sense. I didn't know who like I was put on the little baby. I'm some some friend back home. Listen to him, then the baby. Yeah, I had no clue who he was. I don't until, mind the baby. Yeah, stuff. he's good. I like yeah. him. I didn't I had no clue who he was until um he had a show in in Brisbane last year. Ah. And do like, you get to see many dudes come out like when when rappers nah, come out? Do you nah, like hit them I, ha- up or? I haven't. I haven't seen anything. Yeah, yeah dude, nah. you got that blue check. You should be like fucking DMing some dudes and trying to like sliding in. Nah, I'm good. Uh, you sure? Yeah, it's be, for, it'd just be fun for you to hang yeah. out with like dudes that you can really relate to. Yeah, now nah, I feel, but they, you know, they coming over here with their crew. They yeah. don't have the time for that. You True. know what I'm saying? They got they got their own thing going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And most of the time, every time someone comes, we're gone. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. So like, I I know Tiger was. Just here, yeah. And have you listened to the new Schoolboy Q album? Nah, I haven't. And he's, Bruh. I like him. Right. I got, I got to get on it. Fuck, I, got I wish I knew this. you like three weeks ago because he yeah. was just here and I was up hanging out with them. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah I got, I got to get on it. Yeah, I got to get on it. That new Schoolboy album stuff. Yeah, fuck. Schoolboy's He's dope. a good dude. Yeah, he's a really he seems good. like it though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, no, it's cool. I got some music to listen to now. Oh, right, sweet. I'll, yeah, I'll hook some shit up. Well, yeah, we just did it. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, appreciate you. Sweet. Man, that was nice.